Check it out. Uh, welcome to the Rashawn Franklin Podcast, episode 47. I'm your host, Rashawn Franklin. Uh, back with a special episode. Uh, another one of these ranking um, great, a uh, great artist. This is discography. Uh, I've got Wesley Robinson back. What's good, man? How you been? I cannot complain. Well, I will. Com- I have been complaining. That's what we You can't doing. complain if you want. Yeah, I can't complain. And we did do that for like 20 minutes before we started. But that's, <laughs> that's okay. I will not complain in public. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you? I'm good, man. Um, busy as shit, but uh, making it and I'm good. And I'm like super excited for this. Like I woke up like... You know, well, everybody, everybody who knows me knows the affinity I have for Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a South South Chicago kid and probably the greatest musician of all time, artist in, 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 of all time, in my opinion. Going through this, his discography showed me just like how tough it is to make amazing music s- consistently over however long. And he's done it. I had a great time going through all of his albums. This was amazing. Uh, and I, I woke up excited like a little kid, like it was Christmas. Well, so that's that's funny, because like the last time I was on, we talked about Jay-Z. And like mm-hmm. if you compare Jay-Z to Kanye, Jay-Z's discography does not hold up. It's like Kanye's it discography is going to hold up like generations. Like as much as that's I don't like the fact that he's like, oh, I'm the voice of a generation. It's like, you might not be wrong. He's, he's right. I mean, let's just be you real. might not be um, wrong. And he saw this way before we did. He was coming on wherever he was talking about, like, I'm the greatest artist of all time. Like, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. And he was right. Um, I still think Jay is the best rapper of all time. And he's going to be number one for me and for a lot of people forever. But this nigga's discography is insane. And it was really hard to do this. It really is. Because, like, and so, like, I'm going to just apologize to everybody who I offend right off the bat because I got this I got this stuff like totally different like because I'm I'm one of those compare and contrast type of people mm-hmm. so I had to go back and compare like I was I, I was weighing it based on like for what I did was look at how I felt about that the albums right and then I looked at how other people looked at the album not not as a, as a means to change my mind but to kind of remind myself that like there are things that like I'm just not a fan of certain type of music Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a fan of like melancholy, sad music as a as a, as a general rule. So like some of the stuff that Kanye has made that's more personal and more feeling, like I it just doesn't resonate with me. And it's like a reminder that like no, this is actually really good. I don't like it, but it's really good. And that and then you know that's still like I still put it where I put it. Yeah, and I'm glad that you're on this doing this with me because. I I mean, like I said, and I, I'm gonna bring up Chicago throughout this pro- this podcast a lot, so just get ready. Um, you know, I, I wanted to get an out, outside perspective because I love Ye. Um and so that Chicago connection is gonna be a little different for me. And um, you know, it's just it's good to see get somebody from outside Chicago to talk about this. Uh, as well as somebody who who grew up in it, so uh, yeah, yeah. That so that you talk about your excitement, like that was the thing. You know, I was trying to figure out like what my intro on this would be, mm-hmm. and one of the things that like I was like a Kanye hipster, where like you know I, I I'm old enough to have like WinMX and Morpheus and all those other like file sharing programs down. Oh shit! And got like not Kanye West. You know how people name their own files. I thought his name was Kane West, K A Y N E West. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> every time I would download a file, like it would say that. It would say that, and you know, it's like, um, what was it like on the We Are the Champions? You know, he's like, God damn, Kanye. You know, it's like that was the first time I was like, Oh, now yeah. I keep this. And it's like reading liner notes and like like seeing the same name over and over again. It's like, huh. And then he finally released his music, and I'm like, this shit, this is all right. And then everybody else started liking it. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't like this anymore. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had that whole, like, 
I had that whole, um, I had that whole like, uh, I, I discovered this person, really liked him, really liked him, really liked him. Then everybody else started liking him. So I, I admit, like, I used to be one of those people. It's like other people liked it. I couldn't like it. I was one yeah. of those people. And then there was a turning point. And then when that turning point happened, like, I saw Kanye for who he truly was. And his music has been that much more enjoyable. Absolutely. So what we're going to do here, we're going to rank. So did you want to include Kid, Kid C Ghost in this ranking or no? Yeah, may as well. May as well. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to rank 10 of his albums, including uh, the, the collaboration albums, Watch the Throne and, and Kid C Ghost. We're, we're taking out of uh, all this Jesus is King uh, gospel music. We're taking that out of the rankings and, and just ranking uh, everything else. So that that's to save me from going to hell because I would pick <laughs> the worst and then yes, like Jesus is King is great and I'm like yes, mm-hmm. yes they they would be pretty far down for me. We talked about this. The gospel uh, albums with the with the choirs are a lot better um, than than his solo albums uh, to me. So let's just take those out uh, and just avoid that. So what you got is ten. So I, ten, I'm just gonna go straight to Kid See Ghosts. I mm-hmm. I. I really like Kid C. Ghost. And that Me was too. like, that was like one of those things where I'm just like, oh man, like it has to be the least of these. And it's not even because it's not good. It's just, it's just, it, it, it's, it doesn't have that same transcendence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think some of it's Kid Cudi. Um, and then some of it's just like, it's not, it's not really, it's not, it's just meant to be a moment in time. It's like, it's like, right. it's like they put, it's almost like Child Rebel Soldier, where it's like, if they would have actually continued with that, um, with like the Us Placer song that they did, when was that, like 2007, eight, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, they, they had an idea and then they just like for a moment to do a thing as a collaborative and then just walk away. Yeah. So... Uh- but it's a great concept. I, mean, I love these two together always. Mm-hmm. Um, but I put the 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 situation of these albums, Yay and Kissy Ghost and, and Pusha's album. They were trying to do that album every week thing, so it's kind of hard to uh, make great albums when you're putting all that that content out at, at one time. I mean, he's just he's he's only human. You know what I mean? Like there's there's there's. You, it has to be some type of drop off. So this this why this uh, collaboration album has to be last to me, uh, because it's just it, first of all it's it's it was it feel like it was put together really quickly, uh, even though it's still really fucking good. It feels like it was put together really quickly, um, and I think if they had more time to put together a, a, a solid album, this would be hot, way higher on my shit. But it has to be last, I think. Yeah, no, I I I agree, I agree, and. It so we'll probably get into when we start talking about our top tracks, mm-hmm. but like that's sort of one of those things that like I think is good and bad. Like I don't get a chance to listen to mixtapes anymore, and like and and just like just random single single releases or just random tracks that get leaked. And like there was something to that whole process that made the music more that made the music more enjoyable. Cause it's like, you could, you could find the reference track or you could find like the, the idea that, that they started with and you could, you heard it and then you saw it all the way to completion. Like it was like a behind the scenes look at what was happening. So like that, the good Fridays, I love that. And oh, like, man. and, and like, I love that they put all of that together in one place at the end too. Cause it's like, this was, this was like, it was, it's the best that you can do under circumstances where you're not making music organically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I was, I was actually reading something the other day and I can't remember who it was about. Um, ah, God, I can't remember what artist it was about. And I wish I did because it would make perfect sense if like the point that they were trying, the, the writer was trying to make, which was like so many people just make music because they have to. Mm-hmm. And then making music because you have to, like, a lot of that, like, or like, that's why people's early music is the best usually. Cause it's just like, that's what they wanted to make. That's how they wanted to sound. Right. As opposed to, you know, you worked with a record label for 15 years and like, they know 
they they think they know what's going to work best for you and work best for the fans so like i just kind of love that like hey look we got this project we're going to follow this project we're going to control it on our own terms we're going to make our own music if it's good it makes the, it makes the cut if it doesn't make the cut like hey everybody just knows we're always making music it's perfect yeah I actually like the seven track um, thing. So if we could get our best artists to put out like seven track EPs like twice a year, mm -hmm. I think we'd be uh, we it'd be a lot more fun um, because I, we don't care. For, well, for me personally, I just want to hear what you got going on. Like you're so great uh, when you talk about the superstar like Beyonce, uh, Jay. Yay, those that echelon, Rihanna, if they just put out what they're working on, I think the, the public will be happy. So I think they sort of set a precedent with this seven track thing. I think it's going to be, you know, it always takes a while for Yay's ideas to really take hold of everything. Um, but I think it will eventually and, and we'll start seeing this more. But let's get into the top tracks that you had uh, for this album, because I love this album. Like it, it sucks that it has to be 10. But I listened to this album for like months. <laughs> like it's so good. Like, um, so like I, I mean, honestly, like th that. So that that's the other thing that made this difficult. I really like went through other than I'm trying to think. Other than really just like fourth dimension, and and it's and I like that too. Like I pretty much like liked every single track on this, mm -hmm. and I think. It's it what you're saying about like the seven track is perfect because it's like there's no fat, there's nothing wasted. Yeah. And like early Kanye, when we'll talk about this as we go along, like early Kanye is full of like songs like I I just don't really care for. Yeah. So like it's like you get to a point where it's like college dropout is what, twenty something songs? I feel like twenty two tracks. Yeah. And then you get to Yeezus and Yeezus is like thirteen and it's yeah. like even, even like, yeah. and and there are songs I don't like on Yeezus, but I'm like, but there's so little, there's so like I don't skip the same way it's like with college dropout, where it's like, mm -hmm. I can skip that, I can skip that. And it's not even that I don't like it, it's just some of it is like <sighs> you know, in the in the way that we've developed short attention spans, you know, Twitter, social media, everything being shorter, like as much as I hate it. Like, I actually do like the idea that people aren't just, you know, throwing out every single thing that's on their mind or every single thought that they have. Right. And it ends up being a lot better. Although I will say this, I do miss skits. Like, I miss mm -hmm. skits on albums. Those, yes. are, those are like, <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things in the world. Every yeah. time I listen to something like in the 90s, early 2000s, I'm like, damn, man. We need good skits. And then I'll listen yeah. to something like somebody like Joe Budden, who's who tried to do skits like as recently as like 2000. I'm like, or 2010. And I'm like, mm, maybe we don't need skits then. <laughs> Joe is definitely from that old guard of, of artists that, you know, he still uses the same formula. And that's maybe why I did work for him um, as oh, an artist. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can't spend your time talking about the industry and shitting on the industry and then do what everybody else does. Like, yeah. And then once he finally figured that out, it was too late. Like he had already, he was already several albums in, uh, ruined his relationship with the with the the label, and just like it just wasn't like he wasn't gonna hit again. Yeah, but I mean, he's found his lane clearly, yep. um, and he's just he's has the ability to create such good content on a weekly. It's 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 scary how he does it. Shout out to Joe Budden, man. Love love that guy. Um, and we all using his, his, um, he's, he's created the blueprint and we all using that shit. So yeah, shout out to him. Uh, let's just, I'm going to go with my top five in, in this album. Um, and it's, it's, it's only seven songs. So it's, it's kind of tough to do, but, uh, number one for me is Cuddy Montage. I fucking love that song. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it feels like old school Cuddy. Like it feels like it should be on, um, Men on the Moon, the first one. Uh, such a good song. <sighs> Just great. And then for me, it's Reborn. Um, the title track, Kiss He Goes with, with Most Def. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, free. And then Feel the Love. 
those are like my top five. I love, I love this album, man. It's just, it's just, it's it's most recent, so it's like it kind it has to be ten. But mm-hmm. man, it's is that? Uh, the, but is that the order of those tracks or? Yes, yes. Okay, I got I would, cutting montage one. Hmm. I would go because I didn't. I didn't think about. I should have ranked these, and that would have made it better. I would probably go fire as my number one, then uh, then the cutting montage two. Mm-hmm. But you could go like, and then kids see goes three. Reborn four and feel the love five. And 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 like I said, I liked every single track on that album. So like fourth dimension is like fourth dimension is like a second, like that to me, that's like the one that's like, mm, I could take it or leave it, but yeah. like I, I'm happy it's there. And then uh free is like, you know, I it, it mm, depending on the day, I might I might switch that out, but like it, it's still good though yeah all right um uh, i'll go with uh the ninth album and it's yet um so i i kind of it sucks putting these two albums last because i really enjoyed that time of hip-hop like all the albums they put out in those that month month and a half span were amazing i listened to all of them for the entire year of 2018 pretty much Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think they have to be last in Kanye's discography just because his discography is just so great. Uh, so it's my top five songs here are uh, Yikes. I mean, basically, like, I mean, it really is only five songs, or isn't it really just like a five songs anyway? Yeah. Well, well pretty much uh, six. Because you don't yeah. really count. I thought about killing you. No. Well, that, so so I've had I've had so many discussions about I thought about killing you. Mm-hmm. So many discussions because like people are like that's really toxic behavior, and I'm like maybe it is, but like I also kind of feel like that's <sighs> so where Kanye won me over is like instead of being packaged and like more refined you know like the old school like this i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do a traditional hip-hop album mm-hmm. like when he just decided like he was just gonna he was gonna be himself and he was mm-hmm. gonna deliver things the way that he wanted to and like if it weren't kanye and say say mac miller uh, not mac miller um um post malone did that song mm-hmm trust me everybody would love that shit we'll fuck with that shit yeah everybody would love that shit and it's like that's one of those it's like there's a there's a real kanye bias for some of that stuff i love it i thought of that mm. but we'll, we'll have to talk about yay later because i got a little higher than you do. really yeah yeah i i so this is a it's an interesting the the little preview i'll give you is i had only heard some of it like at foot action, like if they, uh-huh. they um like uh uh I guess what was it? Yeah, Ghost Town would play on um like that was one of the songs that like when our manager started playing music over his iPad, which probably shouldn't be talking about because that could have gotten him fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh like that that song came on and I'm like, oh shit, Kanye. And because I I had I've been out of music for a few years and finally just decided I was gonna get back into it. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I really only recently heard that like all the way in its entirety like this was like within the past like six months I I heard it like as an entirety and I'm like how did I miss this and why is this not like playing everywhere it's because it's the Kanye bias like people really just don't don't fuck with him anymore and like how good it is is like really it's it's really underrated yeah, I think so. The only thing about this, these last albums is uh, not so much Kiss He Goes because he didn't really rap on that. But with Ye, you could tell he's not really using his own raps. And a lot of the times he he doesn't. But this, you can really tell. He just had somebody write a rap. He spit it and did the production and pushed it out. And that's why it has to be low to me. Um, and some of these older albums you could tell he's actually writing a little bit um i actually think he 
I think he stopped writing when Push came to good music. So that was my my dark twisted fantasy. Those are all push up verses that he spit. Um, but this he, he this is just like maybe Travis, uh, people we haven't heard of just writing rhymes and him spitting it. So that's that's why it has to be low to me. But see, I feel like it's to me. I I don't think it's not him writing. I think it's him abandoning the process. And he's like, all right, this is what I want to say. How do we get there? So it's like it's like a dictation process. Like he comes in the room. He's like. And so my, or do it, should I go to my, my number? My yeah, number you can number nine, uh, your number Okay. Nine. So, so going to my number nine, I go to the life of Pablo. And Whoa. Like, oh, okay. So. Right. Whoa. Right. 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 I told you, I apologized early. I apologized early. Um, and, oh, shit. And so what the, what I hear that the most in that album, it's like, he's like, all right, I want to talk about bleached assholes. How do I make this work? And that's, that's, that's to me, like, that's the album that gives away that that's the album that gives away the formula, the most of all of them. Cause it doesn't, it's like, it's like when you get to some of the other albums that are more recent and higher up on my list, like they feel like conversations I had with people in college about like, you know, people we've seen on the internet and I'm just going to leave it at that. Or like, things that we do when people aren't looking. I was going to leave it at that. Life of Pablo, like, it just, I, I don't know what it is about that album. Like, it has not, it never grew on me. Like, listening to it almost feels like a chore. Um, and what? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, that's a, there's a lot of skip worthy stuff on that, and some of it. No, some of, it's not. No, 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 listen, listen, listen. Some of it for me is just being old, like as an old person, like the t- like, I'm listening to it. And I'm just like, meh. Like I'm not moved by it. Like it, it's in the same way that like after four 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 came out, I recognized it was great, but also kind of like have left it largely alone. Uh-huh. It's sort of the same thing with the life of Pablo. Like I'm like, this is this is good. Like I love I love Ultra Light Beam. Like I love Father Stretch My Hands. I love uh I love French track. Like and and like I know that's short. I know that's quick. I, I love French that. track. Uh Facts and Fade, I love those. Like St. Pablo's nice, like, but like half of that stuff in the middle, I'm just like, mm. see, that's the th- I have Okay, I have the life of Pablo very high. Oh, I believe it. I, I, it's. I'm telling you, like, there, the, the two things are like, I'm old. Like, being old really shapes how I listen to this stuff. And then, I just what you're talking about with how you feel about that creative process. I feel like this was the one where Kanye said, "I have to make an album. All of you help me." Mm-hmm. And that's and that's not that's not it's not and it's not bad. But it's just like, it's not for me. I feel you with that. I mean, he has a lot of features on this, uh, but it's so damn good. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. This is, I almost put this shit at one. I love this album, <laughs> like top to bottom. Um, Ultra Light Beams, Follow Stretch My Hand, part one and two. Famous feedback, like waves, wolves. 30 out. Al- this shit is amazing. I love this fucking album. And, and here, here's uh, what I would say about that, too, because I'm not disagreeing with you that, like, the tracks that you, with, well, I don't like Wolves, but with an Orway. What? But, yeah, what? I, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't hate them, but I don't like them. Oh, uh, man. But this, is, but this also speaks to what we were talking about at the very beginning. Kanye's albums are so good that, like, again, if you put the life of Pablo, like, the, the, the life of Pablo stands up against all but, like, three of Jay-Z's albums. Mm-hmm. Like, think, um, about, think about that. And and you might actually, you might only give it two. Like, Blueprint yeah. and Black album are definite, and then it's like, well, I, I can make an argument either way. No, well, I, I thought it would be Blueprint, Reasonable Doubt, and I like, I like this better than Black album, personally, but, um, but I hear you. I hear you. This is this is wild. Ninth? Yeah, yeah. I I I I was looking at it and I'm like, I don't have a good way, I don't have a good way to to make this work. And I know I'm gonna catch some hell for it, but it, it that's where I got it. Shit, man. 
but once you, once you once you get to like my top once you get to my top five it'll all it'll make more sense okay okay yeah so uh yay for me <laughs> the life of pablo and nine for west yeah. yeah and actually you know what i'm not even gonna kill you for that but i, I think a lot of people might have that low uh but for me and we'll talk about it when it comes up on my list. But this was more of like, yay! It, it was. It's. I could. I could tell he was battling between being gospel yay and staying in hip hop yay, and you can hear that that sort of struggle throughout the whole album. And that's the type of struggle that I go through. Like sometimes I want to be wild as fuck. Sometimes I want to pray all day. You know. So it's, you know. And, and 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 that's why I say like it's not like I I I well it, this is gonna get me in trouble in some circles as everything I say does these days. Uh, I kind of came to grips with I don't really want to pray that much a long a long long time ago, mm-hmm. uh, and that's probably like a a, a a lay down on a couch sort of conversation. Um, but I, I and that's why I say I don't think it's for me because like I like I what 17 18 19 like i was just like yeah i still believe in higher power mm-hmm. if i go to my mom's house i still go to church but like i'm done with all this like i'm done with all of this rigid you know i gotta i gotta i gotta balance out two ways of living like i'm just not doing that anymore yeah i hear you um that's not how I live, but I understand it. Is religion is tough. It's 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 hard to um really follow everything that you're supposed to like daily. It's tough. Well, and and you see it, and and I think that's what I think that's what is what Kanye's larger struggle in life is, where it's mm-hmm. like you're trying to live for something that you're ne- like you're trying to if you're qu- if you're trying to be perfect or trying to always make meet goals that you cannot meet. They're just mm-hmm. impossible to me. And you still want to try to do that. Like, and I'm one of those, and, and let me put this into perspective too. Like, I'm one of those people who is largely viewed as a square. Cause like I do still like within personally, like I just kind of like don't do the wrong stuff most of the time. Mm-hmm. I do, like I'm not like, but it's 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 some something as simple as like, you know, people I've known for like 10 plus years are like, I've never heard you curse. And it's like, well, that's because you've never seen me in a cursing situation. Like I curse like all the time. And it's like, that's the sort of thing where it's like, I'm done trying to, I'm done kind of in that space. And if Kanye could come to that realization that you can still, you can still believe what you believe and you don't have to make that your life's work. I think he would be a lot happier and we get better music again. Well, he's comfortable in making his life's work now because he feels like he's accomplished enough in the musical space. And and he's focused on other things. Because I want to talk about, at some point, why that whole Drake and Pusha thing happened is because I think Ye saw that Drake was coming to Adidas and was fucking up. That's, that was going to fuck up his money. Mm-hmm. And he, he was like, he, this nigga got to go. Drake has to go. I don't care how it do- happens. He has to go. He sent Push after him. They baited him to do something. He he took the bait, and then they they fucking uh, did what they did with that with that diss track. So um, he's focused on other things now. He's done what he he's accomplished what he needs to accomplish in, in, as an artist, I think. Um, but he still has that. It, he carries that weight in in the music industry. So he's gonna just focus on giving good gospel music right now and becoming more and making more money for his his children. That's what he's doing. So. No, that's fair. I I just I just think that like he still has to he ha- he still has more secular music in him, and he and, does for sure. I think he's gonna and, give us a secular album this upcoming time. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I do too. But I just I don't I don't see the need for like it's not like it's not like um, it's not like Kelly Price making mainstream albums, but being a gospel singer at heart. Like, I feel like there's a difference and I feel like Kanye is going way too far one direction to kind of- He's like the opposite, really. 
Yeah, yeah. And he's, <laughs> going, he's going way too hard to try to make up for the fact that he's done all of this other stuff and has put out all this other stuff. And it's like, nah, Kanye, just just stick to who you are. Yeah. That's we, that's not that's not it's not even what we like. Because for the longest, I did not like all of this stuff. It's just like, but that's who you are, and that's what makes you great. Like yeah. people will, as an example, people will come around on who you are as an artist. Mm-hmm. Like I've come around on Kanye, as opposed to like, you know, there are some people. It's like they rap or they make music and they sing or they whatever. And it's like the more I learn about them, the less I like them because it's like, no, you are finally showing who you really are, and that's terrible. Whereas Kanye, it's like, no, you're just like a really like challenged person like and i actually relate to those challenges and i appreciate that you're putting out that the putting your broadcasting your challenge for my entertainment yeah it, it seems like he just recognized there's a higher power uh and he just went and and like he does like great people in history do they just go a hundred percent there you know once they realize something and it makes sense in their mind and they're geniuses they're like oh i gotta go to dedicate my entire life to this, um, and that's what that's what he's done, man. And I can't fault him. I get it, um, because I I agree. But like I said, this this album was him fighting. I mean, he's talking about bleach bleached assholes with a choir, a gospel choir in the back <laughs> the background. It's crazy, but that's the type of life that a lot of us live. Like it's like you know, damn. So um, I guess. I guess, <laughs> and, and that's uh, what I mean. Like I, I, I'm just like I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to conform to anybody's morality. I'm just trying to a make sure I don't like. And even then, like it's like because you know the reason why you end up in that space, and this is what this is why I'm actually really like encouraged about Donda on the way is like I'm not by the way, but go oh I on. am I am because like if I if I had to write an album about my mom or write about my mom after she died it would be it would be all the highs and all the lows and they're so like are, you know, well but that's the that's that's the one thing though are we sure that's going to be the name of the album one and two are we sure we're getting an album soon that's why i'm not like okay too, fair, fair. he's a first of all it's tough to get billionaires to sit down and, and do a fucking album kanye is a billionaire now we got 444 from jay he did the jay electronica shit I don't know how much more music we're going to get from uh, Ho. And I'm not sure how much we're going to get from Ye. Because Ye was supposed to bin drop. But go ahead. No, that's fair. No, that's fair. That's fair. I think it'll come out because I think Kanye had... I think Kanye knows he needs to close... Because think about, think about what you hear whenever Kanye... When, think about what you hear whenever Kanye does something. People mm-hmm. say... The Kardashians did that to him. Kim did that to him. Or if his mom was around, he wouldn't be like this. Mm-hmm. And I think he needs to. I think he needs to address both of those artistically in a way that people can understand that, you know, everything with his mom wasn't great. Not to say that you know he probably obviously he loves his mom. But all, most all of us do, and you know our moms do the best for us. But like. I think about this again this is like a lay down on the couch sort of conversation like a lot of the things that my mom did to try to like help give me a better life kind of hurt me in the long run and, Actually, I know what you mean, yeah. and like pre- and prevented some of like my own natural growth or understanding of the world in the way that I wanted to and like you know for with religion specifically like we mm-hmm. always went to church I grew up in the church like church all the time it was a stretch in my life church almost every day every single day like meeting uh bible study brotherhood youth church uh saturdays was like the only day we got off really otherwise it was in church like all the time and like that's a job right yeah yeah. and like on some levels that's great because like it kept me out of trouble but like i didn't get to make my own decisions yeah, And I feel like what Kanye is going to end up doing is explain that, like, he, I, I feel like he's going to get into, like, his whole, his whole, everything that was going on with him and everything that's been going on with him and how much of the stuff that he does is, is under his control, how much of it isn't. And, mm-hmm. like, if you, if you shape it under the, the, the character of mom, like, it sounds great. Because I can relate to that, and and I'm I'm all in for that. <laughs> yeah, um, 
and, and the religion religion conversation is like a long conversation that you know I don't want to have right now. But I, I feel you. I hear you. Um, the structure and the concept of religion for your kids is, I think, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but putting it putting it on them that much can be can backfire. Like I mean, it just it just can. Uh, the the thing about this upcoming album, if it's if it's Donda, if you know, if a lot of ifs, um how he's gonna talk about that stuff means he has the right rhymes and he hasn't done that shit in a long time. So I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. I I I mean it's Kanye West. Whatever he gives us, I'm gonna be excited for and I'm gonna definitely listen to. But um I don't I don't hold that same uh excitement. For it. I think we I think that this body of work that we recently researched is good enough, mm -hmm. and he could just go be a billionaire and set his kids up for the rest of their lives and his grandkids and stuff like that. So I could very much see this being the next album being an album that I like and you don't like. Could be like because it's like I'm expecting old man rap, but like not. Totally and I'm cool old. for I'm I'm cool on old man rap from Ye. Like like Hove yeah. is a. Uh, a he's going to be a lyricist to the day he dies and a, a good rapper. Yay, not so much. So, yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm, before we go further, I'm glad you said that because there's so many, like, part of part of what soured me on Kanye in college was everybody talking about how great of a rapper he was. And I'm like, y'all know he's not doing this all by himself, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, why don't, like, if anybody else, that, and that's another discussion altogether, like and maybe maybe the next one we do is Drake, like in terms of ranking albums. But like the I actually that shit because I don't really like Drake's albums. Oh, like, I don't either. <laughs> but that but that's like it poses a challenge that like I would actually be up for. But uh -huh. like that, that's like we we give certain people credit. Like you know back in the day, it it was it was a it was a bad thing to be to have ghostwriters or if people. Ghostwriter was, and then like with Drake and Kanye, like it, people were like the music, the music slaps, and it's like okay, was it was it ever actually about the music or was it about the people? You know, like mm -hmm. if if we're if we're saying you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody who's notoriously ghostwritten, so it doesn't it doesn't offend anybody. Uh, uh, that that has been written for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dre. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, no, that's that's actually perfect. Because I think at that point, no one actually looked to him for lyrics anyway. Well, that's a, that's the thing. Dre, oh, Ye doing all the production. Drake is just supposed to be a rapper. So how how the fuck is he getting away with ghostwriting and Ye isn't? Ye at least is putting the, sh the drums and shit on the fucking track. I don't understand it. I really don't. I don't <laughs> what? Understand. And 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 I say that like so like Royce the Five Nine is one of my favorite rappers ever, and like mm -hmm. he's like the king of ghostwriting. Like, and you just look, you just you're just like, I get it, because like when he does his own stuff, it's like, yeah, this isn't for the masses. This is mm -hmm. for people like me who just like to listen to people rap. Like, yeah. and I'm fine with that. And then it's like you get people who ghostwrite for like you hear about people ghostwriting for Drake, and it's like they can do this by themselves and be really really well off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonder what like what's happening. I don't yeah. know. Well, uh, I don't want to get into like uh, I want to like this yeah, is yeah, a yeah, tangent. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is what I do all the time. I'm gonna say this about Royce, and then we can move on. It's like when I hear him with other good rappers on a track, he don't really take it serious. Like, no, not at all. No, but he he's should. Doing, he's doing his own thing. I actually, but that's the thing I appreciate about it because it's just like, it's just like. He's just out here just like, you know what? I'm going to say what I got to say because it's not it's not even at the end of the day, the lyrics don't matter at that point because he knows he's just he's just out. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Out rapping. I, I did a uh, you you remember Divine or, you know, Divine Karate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I was in I was on Clubhouse last night and he did a he did a battle with this dude and when I say he destroyed, like destroyed him, like yeah. the first round, it was like they both went probably 48 bars. He destroyed 48? him. Damn. It was like in the dirt. And then it was a tie. And I'm just like, that's why, I, that's that's part of the reason why I stepped away from music, specifically hip hop, because it's like this man put on a total lyrical exercise. Mm -hmm. Like, 
But if you don't understand where he's coming from or where those lyrics are, then you're just not going to go any, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, you have, you. you have to be able to, like, if somebody makes a reference about, yeah, I, like, uh, um, uh, what's the, Ghostface is, like, notorious for that. Like, he referenced, like, there was uh, on, uh, on Blackout, like, in uh, Method Man and Red Man album, um, Run for Cover, he references Oliver North. And I just happened to be at high school when that album came out and learned about him in school. So I was like, oh shit, he's talking about Oliver North. If you don't know who Oliver North is, then that doesn't, that like what you, that, that, that two, those two words don't evoke anything for you. Right. So you just heard two words mm -hmm. where I'm like, it's like, it's like with, with Doom, like MF Doom was like that too, where it's just like, he says something and it's like, you know, he's like, uh, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head right now that's like really profound. But like if he's rapping about like uh movies or music or something like that, and he brings up Cyclops, like I'm I'm I can hear him calling somebody a beta, a beta male, like mm -hmm. without him, without him actually saying beta male. And it's like that's why so much of rap is like that's why it's so subjective. Cause if you don't know what they're talking about, like yeah, none of it makes any sense. Right. And that's that's kind of why. Guys like Ye and, and Lupe and Twister mean so much to Chicago kids because they're speaking a language that we only know. You know, like they're, they're speaking a language that is foreign to other people. But when they say certain things, it don't mean shit to y'all, but it means everything to us. Um, yep. So, but I would but still yeah. say all, I would still say all, a lot of what they do resonates with us. Too. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but when they talk about gang shit and like certain things like yeah. that, even. Even when you talk about with Griselda, when they talk about certain Buffalo shit, we don't know what the fuck they're talking about, but it still slaps. Still hard. It's yeah. still hard. <laughs> um, and I, it took me a while to bring up Griselda, so that's good. Um, eight. What you got? Well, I've got yay at eight. Um, so not not super higher, not okay. not a whole lot higher than where you had it, but like I mean, I I was just like I listened to it. I, I listened to it for the first, like I said. Three within the past three to six months within the past three to six months, I listened to it all the way through for the first time, and I listened to it for like three days straight. Like mm -hmm. I, I played it, I played the whole thing through like twenty something times. It was mm -hmm. just that good. It's really good. I, and and it, and it, it's like it was quick. It was simple. Like it hit the right notes. Like because I don't like I'm not a huge Ty Dolla Sign fan. Like I don't mm -hmm. hate him, but like his music just it's just not for me. But it's mm -hmm. also like when you can figure out a way to get him on a song and make he it fast on that shit too. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it's it was one of those things where it's like this is what happens when someone with like actual genius level talent collaborates with people who are really really good and brings out the best in them. Absolutely. So yeah, like I I, I got that at eight. So and I think we've done most of the tracks. So I think we can move to your eight. Um, Jesus, Jesus is eight. What? Yeah. No, no. Okay. But <laughs> see, that's the thing. I love this album personally, but it has to be eight. Um, it has to be. It has to be eight. It has to be eight. I love. No, no, no. Don't give me. I mean, it's, this is this is why this is difficult. This is why this is difficult. It's so fun. Um, this is this is difficult. It's so that's the thing. I I kind of rank these albums by how hard it was for me to do a top five. Um, okay. And it was relatively easy to do a top five with this album because there's only about, I mean, I'm not even gonna say that. I, I love this album, let me start there. But there's only a, like five that I really, really fuck with and go back to from this album. And that's, uh, well, my favorite song on this album is I'm In It. I fucking love that song. It, it, what I, it, I, I love it, but, it is also like if the first time you hear it, it's not good. That's, yeah. Let me just say that. I can go. I see what you're saying. And then, and then, like you get what's happening, and it's like, oh, this shit is hard. This shit is crazy. That's like one of my favorite yay like beat yeah. tracks. Is this one? <laughs> I love. Yeah. I'm in it. No, the first time I heard it, I was just like, I don't, I don't get it. And then I was like, oh, I get, I get it. And then, and then when the when the beat drops, it's just like when the when that the shit is crazy. It, it's fire. Yes. yes, I'm with you. I'm with and you. I love I love women. So it's like, yes, all of the emotion that he evokes on this track is like, 
my exact feelings. So <laughs> this is my shit. I love that fucking uh, song. Um, and the rest of them would be obviously Blood on the Leaves. I, I think that's, man, <sighs> wow. Just incredible. Uh, on site, I love okay, Bound good. to, obviously. And okay. um, I, I struggle to find a, a fifth. I could put, I like them all, but I put uh, Hold My Liquor. I really like Hold My Liquor. See, I, that's the only that's the only song I don't really like on the album. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And and so I I get where you're coming from on this. I think this is, I got this way higher. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason why I think those songs stick out, because like I I would I would swap out Black Skinhead with Hold My Liquor, and Black Skinhead is not even really because of the lyrics. Like mm-hmm. it's just got a it, it's got a really um. I like the I like the production on it. I like I like the beat. I like the sound. Did he do um, that or who who did that? Do you no, know? that one is like that's like Daft Punk. Okay, um, but like I just I just like I just like like when it when it plays, I'm just like, yep, I'm there. Like I I don't really like the lyrics are fine, but it's just kind of hard. It's kind of hard to to hold the lyrics the same way that they were, knowing what we know now about Kanye. Like, you can't be a black skinhead and wear a MAGA hat. Like, or right. maybe your black skinhead is different than you thought it was or represented it as. Oh, Lupe did some production on this. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But, but what, what makes this... <sighs> what makes that album so good is, like, the songs that stand out are just, like, you could, you could put... You could put on site. I just like. I I know why people don't like it. I get it. I'm fine with it. I love that fucking song. Oh, I I love it too. Like I think it's the perfect way to start an album. People, hell like, yeah. But like <laughs> with with new slaves, I'm in it. Blood on leaves, uh, and bound. Like those are those are songs that you could put in like Kanye's top fifty. And I think yeah. what what makes this album so good is like the the highs the highs of it are so high that super you high the lows aren't that low yeah, yeah. like I like send it I, up I like yeah. no trip yeah um but and actually now that I'm thinking about it Lupe probably didn't produce a lot he probably wrote a lot of Black Skinhead actually yes um I like New Slaves a lot too so uh you know. It's a it's a solid, it has to be eight to me though like it, it can't I get it and not put I this it. I get it I hear you though it's a and, and for me it takes me back to the summer of 2013 it was one of the best summers I've ever had in my life the Hawks won the uh, Stanley Cup Chicago it was my first summer back to Chicago from Kentucky that summer was crazy so I, I like I think of those mem- those those memories. While I listen to it, like we we talked about last time, how music is a uh, it's a time capsule, and mm-hmm. I just hold a lot of uh, great memories to this to this album. So oh no, like I I the, like so why this album stands out to me is like you know Tarek Nally, like that mm-hmm. was we we had a listening party the night the night that album dropped, and it was like me and like ten of our mutual friends, and then like ten of his other friends who were also there, and like listened to it all the way through like as a group. And then like have like a wind down chat party with it. And it was like, I didn't, and and if if you were to ask anybody at that time, they probably would have been like, yeah, you didn't really like the album that much. And it's grown on me so much more. And I'm like, yeah, I forsook this album in a way that I should not have right off the bat. Um, and I was a little like, I'm a little, I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't like it as much as I did at first. But like I said, like when I play it, I'm like, this this works now and aside from aside from Kanye's like new personality like uh, as a as a as a maggot like it still plays today like if if you <laughs> force Kanye from black skinhead and blood on leaves cuz i still like blood on leaves but like i don't know that i don't you, you say lupe you know wrote a lot on it it's like yeah i don't know that kanye necessarily believes all of the stuff that he said at that point or he just has a very different perspective and that's scary um well he's a gemini and we do that from time to time you get trust me um uh but i actually don't so i didn't really want to get into this because i, I have a different view of like 
the actions that he's taken lately. Um, it's disgusting. Uh, no lie. Like I can't, I can't sit here and say it's not disgusting, but I think it is a cal- calculated shit. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think that this, he's too bright and too much of a genius for this shit to be, just be what it is at face value. Um, I know for a fact that the yay that we're seeing ain't the yay that really is like, you know, and, and maybe that's just being me, me being naive, but it's just like, you can't go from this, this guy spitting this shit to, to this new, new guy that quickly. The only thing that could change you is becoming a billionaire, which he did. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, but I, at this particular time in his life, he was trying to, uh, become more of a force in the clothing industry and they wouldn't let him through. So that's mm-hmm. why I said this is, this, this, it sounds angry because he was angry. Yeah. Um, and they, they finally let him through and now he's wearing MAGA hats and shit. So, you know, it seems like a farce. It seems like he's not really that guy. Uh, and I hope he's not, but you know, it has to oh, be more no. than, than face. But it has to be more than just taking that face. Right. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, it's like there's a there's an old Bill Simmons article floating around somewhere about how life is wrestling. And he wasn't the first person to say it. He won't be the last person to say it. I just referenced it because it was like that was the thing that made me like Bill Simmons. It's like he said you know, life is wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like everything is wrestling. Like that there's, it is. there's always a work. There's all. But then but then there are people who don't go through the work and they're shooting straight. And then there are people who break kayfabe only when it when it's, ne- it's necessary. Yeah. And like, I was just like, okay, I see it. I see it. And like, I, the only reason why I reference that right now is because I don't disagree with you. I just don't know. I don't see the vision. I don't, but as a, as someone who's a wrestling fan, like nine times out of 10 with the WWE, I don't see their point. It usually doesn't work out the way that they want it to either. Um, oh, that's where I get a little worried. Like the long-term booking, what are they trying to do here? I don't yeah. know. So like, that's, that's where, that's the only reason why I don't, I, I don't openly or talk like discuss it or even ponder on it because it's like I don't know what his end game is or what his end goal is but we'll see and I'll just enjoy it when it happens yeah we'll see um let's let's move on all right so then what are we at now seven your, your seven or my seven uh you go ahead oh wait no I just did seven you did no no you did eight eight was eight was yay for you and my eight was jesus we talk about oh jesus. okay that's right that's okay. right all right so then my i hate i hate to do this i hate to do this because is it gonna be college dropout no 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 okay no, no. i've worked i i like i told you i was doing last minute edits on this and i was like and i said if i did i thought about it but i, I didn't do it because it was like no there's there's a lot better than that this is gonna upset me i, I can tell no, Go ahead. No, no, no 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 okay no, it's right where it should be. My eight is Watch the Throne. Oh, I right. hate to have done that because, like, that album, that album holds a special place in my heart. Like, Absolutely. that's my is like my favorite, my favorite Kanye song, Kanye Jay Z song ever. Like, not like it. It would categorize in both of their catalogs. Like, that's yeah. how much I love that 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 track. There's Wait, a, which one? That's my bitch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really <laughs> roll. Love that. Love it. We talked about that though. Yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a rough. Um, like that i had a rough cut of that song before the album came out um like without all the drums and like without the the singing like refined like it was like poorly mixed and everything and i listened to that like every day until the new one came out and i'm just like oh this is even better and i just i love q-tip on production too so like that one uh like that that to me like it's 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 hard to put it above anything let let me stop at that point though before you keep going uh-huh. Kanye is the best at the tracks that we get we're not supposed we're not supposed to, and they're still really fucking good. And then he refines them, and then that's what they are on the album. He's the king of that shit. I yeah. love that oh, shit. Yeah, 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 it's it's in and in, in the same vein, Jay Electronica is the king of. Hey, remember that song you heard ten years ago? Here, Here it is again. <laughs> <laughs> In Fuck out of here! I don't know what they shit be <laughs> No, like I, I mean, like when I, when I tell you, like, eat, like 
I even I don't I'm not a huge Beyonce fan, and I have to say that quietly so people like that's that's a that's a that's a hive I don't like offending because there's more yeah, of don't more of me because I'm like part of the Beehive kind of anyway. So and I've come I've even come around on Lift Off. Like I literally like everything. I love Lift Off. I yes. hate it, but I I've come around. I have come around. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the the only thing actually I take that back. Welcome to the jungle, and who gonna stop me? Really bother me. Um, welcome to the jungle because it's just like it, it. I I don't know what they were doing with that beat, and it just it's it underplays what they're rapping about. And then who gonna stop me? Is it's just like I'm not a, I'm not one of those people who's like oh they didn't even change the sound of the song like that they sampled they just did the same thing yeah. like I'm not one of those people who gets mad about that because like Alchemist is like he's top five producer for me too and he does that with people and I'm listening to like. I'll, I'll be listening to Griselda song or not Freddie Gibbs or yeah. somebody. And then it's like, you go to the liner notes and it's like sample starts at zero. And it's like, Oh, that's just him rapping over, you know, some Spanish song from 30 years ago. Right. Um, but like, I, who gonna stop me bothered me. Cause it's like, that just destroyed like that. Hey, it's not even a good dubstep song. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then right. like, they just, they just rapped over. But I mean, like, like I said, like I got so many good memories from this song and I hate to put it so low, like because at the end of the day, like I would I could make a strong case for it being number two for me. But I just can't do it from a from a like I know it's not the best of Kanye's work, which is why I won't put it that high. And I think that actually is it speaks because I think I had it at five with Jay-Z's. Um, yes. Somewhere eight, around there. It's eight in Kanye's. And Kanye has half as many albums. <laughs> right. So that says something, you know, that says something about the quality of Kanye. Absolutely. Um, but, that, but that's also part of the reason why I wanted to have it higher, because it's like, uh, well, it is up there, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I can't be mad at it there. Um, we, we talked about how great this album is for me. I love it. Uh, Murder to Excellence is probably my favorite track on here. Uh, yeah. But, and Otis, well, that and Otis are like, those are like my two favorite songs uh, from these two. Like they, if you if you rank them, uh, they would be high in their uh, individual track Otis, list for me. Otis is tough only just because like when songs get played a lot and they, yeah. like so niggas in Paris is like that song got played a lot, but it's like it's a it's the sort of song you want to hear a lot. Like yeah, it's it's, a, it's like got an upbeat like up tempo. Like yeah, I'm I'm in this. Otis got played a lot and it's not a bad song but it's just like it's it's not easy like and I still like it it's just not easy to listen to on repeat mm-hmm. that's not the same for me I, I think it has everything um I think it's I, I at one point I thought it was the best hip-hop song I've ever heard wow uh, I love that fucking track love it love it um, I can listen oh, to Otis like a million times in a row oh no see when, when Watch the Throne drops like I listen to it all the way through and then, like, I was like, "All right, I, how many times can I listen to Niggas in Paris before I got before I fall asleep?" It's and I, I, I got through a lot of plays. It's really good. It's like a fucking uh, adventure every time. I really like Niggas, but it got it got played out to me, and that's why I yes. kind of like uh, step step away. We're seven. My seven is uh, graduation. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, it holds a lot of. Uh, memory for me because this was the first album that dropped while i was at uk so this is 2007 um maybe spring semester it dropped no no no, no. when did you start when did you start at uk uh august of 2007 so this dropped in september of 2007 so this is the first uh kanye album i had uh at the university of kentucky so um Side Man, note, let me let me let me just stop real quick. The only reason ahead. why I want to stop real quick, because like I've always known you're younger than I am, but I didn't realize how much. Like the it if if I would have been on track, we would have never crossed paths. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I was I was supposed to graduate in 2007. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. That's wow. what that's what that's what blew my mind about this. I'm like, wait, what? Like, hold on. Hold on. I would have been gone in May 07. Yeah, like, it happens. Nobody stays on track in college anymore. I think that's like, that's just how it is, man. Like, you get to college and that shit is fun as hell. I'm staying here for at least an extra year. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> that shit is funny as hell. What? Uh, yeah. So yeah, graduation at seven. I love this album, but it has to be low for me because um, this is when he started to deviate from the formula to me that he had that he that he made uh-huh. uh, with the first two. He kind of just put guys he wanted to work with on this album and and uh, and put it together. But it, I mean, it's got some great memorable tracks on this shit for sure. Um, but you got something to say? I feels like I, no, I, no, no. I get it. I get it. I get it. I love it. I love it. Like, I got a little higher. Mm-hmm. I got a little, actually, I got a lot higher. A lot higher? Wow. Lot higher. Um, the singles are amazing. And, but it, it's to, to what the other albums mean, it has to be this low to me. Um, you know, can't tell me nothing stronger. Good life, uh, flashing light. I look, homecoming. Oh my God. See, I, I'm kind of tripping, but it's like, it's like, yeah. But, but see, I, I love Barry Bonds. I love drunk see, and Black girls. See, I love everything I am. I can I do without I, them. Oh, you know, drunk Barry Bonds is okay. Drunk and hot girls, I can really do without. Barry Bonds is so fire because he uh, basically he basically said I'm on steroids. Like like that, that's what see that's what this is what I mean. Like with the connection and the like, I heard that and I'm like, Kanye's telling you he's on steroids. Like I can't. Like even not liking him at that time, like I didn't, like I wasn't, like the bit, I wasn't. This is actually what started to turn me on Kanye, as a matter of fact, because it's like, no, he gets this, he gets how he's perceived, and he gets what people don't like about him, and he's because le- Barry Bonds, as a sports fan, you know, Barry Bonds is an asshole. Barry oh, Bonds, yeah. is a surly piece of shit, and Kanye's like, that's me, I love it, and here's another hit, Barry yeah. Bonds, I Barry love Bonds. it. Um. <laughs> I, I do like that premieres on this. Uh, that that was one of my with everything everything I am or uh, every uh, yeah everything. Yeah, I, I love I love that song. Uh, that 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 was like the first. That was also like the first song, like truly like the tr- the first truly introspective Kanye song, where it wasn't just like he was trying to show you who he was, but like he was trying to show you who he really was. Like I mm-hmm. really connected with that song. Um, and this, my favorite B track or one of them, uh, by Ye is is the Glory. I fucking yeah. love yeah. that yeah. song. That's my shit. Um, and Flashing yeah. Lights is just, um, man, it just does so much. Uh, I don't know stuff. how you. I get why you have it low, but I don't know how you have it so low. The rest of these albums just mean more to me. Um, fair. No, that's fair. But this is a. I mean, obviously, it's Kanye West, so. Uh, and good morning. Oh my goodness, that shit is crazy too. <laughs> I listened to this album this morning, and it was, uh, you know, it's really really good. But it, as far as the others, was it seven? The other six just mean more, I think. So, yeah, I that's gotta put that at seven. That's fair. All right, six. What you got? This is where we start to. This is where it starts to get bad for me. I got late registration at six. Oh, no. All right. We're no. Six. No. Wes G, no. No, no, listen. And no, listen, man. I'm doing the same. Like, I'm. No, man, bro. No, I'm telling you. Like, I, as I li- as I, as I went through this, I'm just like, as much as all of this is. No, crazy, no, 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 no. I can't do this. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's so great. No, it's no, great. no. But new Kanye means so much more to me. Whoa, what? I know, uh, I know. I told no, you. No, 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 no. Gonna get rough. We can't do this. We can't do this. It's gonna get rough. It's gonna get rough. All right, so you know you know that feeling we had when we both listened to Blueprint again when we were doing Jay-Z shit? That's the same feeling I have with this album. It's perfect. I won't, I won't. So I think what makes it so, it takes me back, which is a good thing, but it's also one of those things where it's like, yeah, we gotta leave. Some of this stuff needs to be left behind. Like, like no, tell me what tracks you dropping. I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dropping it. It's just like the sound and the, the construction of it. Like, it's just, it's it's dated. It's somewhat dated. 
And that's where that's where it loses me. Cause like even what you said about like, oh, this is people he wanted to be featured with, like that's sort of what he did on 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 late registration. Like he's just like, hey, I want to do a song with Adam Levine. And like if you give me and and and, and this is like where I kind of do like the side by side comparison. Heard him say or homecoming. I'm taking homecoming every time. Cause it's yeah, like but that's not a good that's not a good comparison. But go ahead. Yeah, but there's, there's like but there's also oh, like with Chris Martin and and, and uh yeah. Adam Levine. Okay. There's like analogs for a lot of those really, really high songs, with the exception of like Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Like there's no comparison to that. Like there's no touching that. Um but yeah, like, and I, I like the version with him so yeah, like solo. I you could leave Hove off of that track to me. That second verse on the first diamonds. I yeah. love that's my favorite that's one of my favorite Kanye verses of all time but go ahead I, no 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 I don't disagree with you it's fire it's fire I just look at it it's like you know gold digger Jamie Foxx like I like the song like that's a night that was a nice club song at the time but like I don't I don't like that doesn't do anything for me in 2021 you know like uh actually I really like wake up Mr. West I really like crack music I like green me down like I it's it's a good it's 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 great, but it's it's just one of those things that it's like so much of this is you're comparing what Kanye was and is. And to me, like where he is and what he shifted to is better than what he was. Like it, and it's tough. Like we measure. Like, remember when that shit dropped? <laughs> that shit is crazy. It's still crazy. That like that shit like, is nuts, bro. Um, it will it is. It is. But like. I just, I'm just like, uh, it's also a, it's also like yesteryear for me. Like it's nice to come back to every now and then, but it's not like, it's not like something I need to hold on to in the same way. It, and that doesn't mean like that it's bad. It's just sort of like, like I mean, if you look at it like, you know, just strictly as like your sophomore album, like, and and what what that means like metaphorically, like my sophomore year was a fun year of school, but like I would much rather my freshman album my, my freshman year was like the truth because it was like you're learning everything and then everything afterwards subsequently like was better because it actually propelled me where i needed to be like to me late registration is kanye finding himself and and, and figuring out who he is and then kind of like laying out the thesis for where he's gonna go and so like it like i feel like the other albums after that are like begetments of late registration so like it just doesn't it just doesn't hold the same for me. I get it though. I get it. I get it. I get it. There was a, when I first started doing this, I had it at number four, and then I was just like, I, ah, I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta. I, I, I'm looking at it differently now. Uh, oh. what's your number six? 808s. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's the best. That, mm, uh, no spoilers. All right. That's number one for you. It might be. It is. It, it's that's like that. That's in the universe. Everybody knows that's my favorite Kanye kind of album. That's like people give me shit about that all the time. It's really good, and what it meant for hip hop is you know a lot. But damn. Well, okay. Labor Registration is my number one. Oh wow! So we just did. We just. Uh, that's like perfect symmetry. That's like perfect symmetry. I, I feel you. And and now that you say that, like, I totally understand where you're coming from. Like, why you're so upset about my registration? Because I'm like, oh, the Italy is so perfect. It's so perfect. It's it's so, it's so sad. Um, which is, you know, I mean, I love sad. I mean, I don't like being sad. I mean, you know, but wow but it so so where 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 i dis where i think it's great is it's it's sad but it's not it's not wallowy sad it's like it's it's literally like a diary of or a journal of the things that you like after a bad breakup on something you didn't see coming like it goes through all steps of getting through it and then mm. like it's done and it's quick and it's simple and it flows. I love it. Well, it the coldest winter is like the saddest Kanye song like I think I've ever heard. I think it's just sad. It's tough to listen to to me. Um, 
Yeah. Just because I know, like, you know, the feeling of losing a parent and mm-hmm. um, all of that stuff is, you know, uh, it's tough. It's tough. I know the feeling he had. Like, I, I, I feel that feeling that he had. But, uh, you know, 808s, for what it did, it, it, it like I said, it changed hip hop. But as a complete listen, I skip a lot of those shits. Let me go to it. Let me just tell you what I skip. So I I I don't disagree. And this is this is where I also understand your argument. I skip songs, but I don't skip them because they're not good. Like I, right. it's just it's just one of those things. Like like amazing. So amazing is my number two Kanye song. Like I I if I'm ever in a, having a day, it's like Kanye and Jeezy. Like those are. Those are two of like my top ten artists ever. So like having them both on the same track is beautiful. It makes me oh, happy. I meant Bad News by uh by Kanye, not Coldest Winter. But they're both very very sad though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so but I, I oh go ahead. Well, so say you will welcome Heartbreak Heart. I mean, it's tough. You all all these albums are amazing. So it's like you know we just picking and choosing at this point. It's it's but, it, yeah. This shit crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> like it's a really good album, but man, like I, I skip, I skip streetlights. I, and I told, and the, those the bad news and colors when are, are just too, too sad. I don't mind a huge fan of Pinocchio story. And oh was, what? Oh when I when I discovered that song existed, I was like, why didn't they put this? Why why am I just now finding out about this? But see you in my nightmares is crazy. It's but go crazy. ahead. No, like, so, and again, we got, I got to keep saying this. Kanye's discography is so different than almost every, like, than, than every other person in hip-hop history. Yeah. Um, but then also, like, it, it's, it's when, you, when you sit and think about his, his impact on music as a whole, like, you, you understand, like, he deserves all of the credit he's getting because of how, how fucking nuts the shit it's nuts. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. It's insane. Um, nah, I, I, I can't disagree. I, I hear you talk the coldest stuff. That shit is crazy. Oh my goodness, it's good. It's really, really, really fucking good. And and it, and uh, it's 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 damn near perfect. Like and, and mm. like I said, I think I think it's so good that like. I won't say I don't listen to the same songs that you don't listen to, but like, I have to know, I I have to like, it takes me to a place I have to know I want to go to. Cause it's, Mm -hmm. cause it's, it's so simple, but it's also complex at the same time. Yeah. So like, I can't just like, like cold, like coldest winter and bad news. Like I'm not just going to want to have that pop up in a playlist. Hell no. That'll kill the whole fucking vibe. Right. (laughs) <laughs> but if I'm if I'm just chilling, just want to listen to music and listen to something good that makes me think and feel, I'll listen to them. And yeah. it, and that's like that's the it's it's sort of the same thing with like Jesus, where Jesus like I I think there's a level of it's like showing you the 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 ugly side, the warts and all, like and because there's it's so good and so vivid and so connectable. Like you just say, I'm not listening to this, but it's not because it's not good, and that's why that's why I have it super high because it's like, yeah, like I don't like feeling like this, and I, I like I said at the top, like I don't really like, I don't really like um, sad music. Like one of my 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 I was going through and doing like my favorite Kanye tracks ever, and like take one for the team from from Good Fridays. Like it didn't even it didn't even make the Good Friday album, but like that's my favorite Kanye song, and it's just like it's about. Like, if you if you look at, so I, I would actually love to write about this one day and do a deep dive in Kanye versus Diddy, because Diddy is what like Kanye want or Diddy wants to be what Kanye is. There's a lot of the similar like approaches to music, like using cognitive dissonance in the way that you produce it and the sound versus what's actually being said and mm-hmm. like. But Kanye is just a better musical persona. And like in listening to this album, it's like, it's like, uh, it made me think a lot of Press Play um, by Diddy 
-hmm. but it's just better and it's it stays in one place as opposed to like trying to be something poppy and catchy and also introspective and also real but also like that people can commercially pick up too um because like yeah like like and I, and i've also softened on diddy as i get older too because i'm like diddy just wants to make hits he yeah. wants to be like the rap quincy jones i can't i can't fault him for that yeah um yeah i mean i guess that's that's perfect symmetry we both got these six and one which is crazy <laughs> that's a cra- that's crazy that's uh, so great yeah that's crazy but yeah just going back to labor church real quick uh this album is it, it feels like the last time when Ye was really you can hear the chicago in the entire yes. album yes so that's why maybe and maybe that's why i romanticize this particular album because it's like after that he was too huge hollywood he's gone like it, we were never gonna get this particular let yay anymore ever again which is good and bad in some in some instances like uh if you want to become who you really can be, you got to get out of Chicago. Like, that's just, that's just how it is. But um, you can still, just from the shit he's saying to uh, the sound to everything, it still feels so Chicago. You know, my whole mile used to stay, 79th of May, one of my best friends from back in the day, down the street from Calumet, a school full of moles, nicknamed K-Rock, so they'll leave me alone. That's so Chicago, like, it's the it, most Chicago shit ever, bro, and I love it. Um, and, and, and then on top, on top of it, with the sound, it's just amazing, man. This is a it's a perfect album. Well, and I was gonna say to that point, like so, you know, between hip hop and sports, I think those are the things that have like the biggest influence on me as a person in terms mm-hmm. of like wanting like how I perceive the world and wanting to see more of the world, and then getting a lens into that world. So like. You know, I used to go to Chicago before uh, the pandemic. I used to go, like, my sister lives in Chicago. Like, some of my, like, like great friends live in Chicago. So, like, I used to go to Chicago all the time. And, like, one of the things that's always interesting about going to a place that you hear people talk about, like, because, like you said, between Lupe, Twista, and Kanye, like, those are three rappers who transcended, you know, the city, but also brought their city to you. And... I would argue that Lupe probably did the best job of translating that over to the mainstream. I agree. But but not because he did it better, but because he was more intentional about it. Um, and Lupe was more in the streets than people realized. Um, yeah. He hung around with a lot of gangsters. And, and 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 to the point that like um you know Jared um Jared Williams Dove like yeah. he he was like I fu- like he's like I fuck with Lupe heavy but he's like it's hard for me to listen to him like he was one of the, like he remember he used to do the uh, the things at the cultural center right like the we'd listen to stuff and he's like you know like it's hard it's hard to balance like this person talking about God and talking about uplifting people when you know the people he runs with right and I was like what do you mean and then you know crash course in that too. Um, and that, that's, that's always why, like, that's always why Lupe will forever hold a special place in my heart. Cause it's like, he, he really was able to paint pictures so vividly in a way that like, I don't know anyone else has about their city. Cause like, I would argue that every New Orleans artist has the ability to do that, but New Orleans is also, it's so stark. Whereas like you, the first time, first time I went to Chicago as an adult was for the unity conference was NABJ, AA, like all the minority journalism, um, um, all the minority journalism organizations. And we stayed at the Sheraton, like down by the river and the bridge. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I was amazed at how clean the city was. And like, I was amazed at how nice it was and how friendly everybody, how friendly everybody was. And then once I got time to walk out and venture out on my own, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, yeah, I just crazy. went like six blocks. Yeah. And it was a totally different city and a totally different world. I talked to this uh, this homeless guy. Like, he was hanging out at the, at the CVS that was by the hotel. And 
Um, I think his name was Anthony West. I, I I know his name was Anthony. I can't remember his last, but I can't remember his last name. I'm pretty sure it was Anthony West. I got it in notes somewhere on an old computer. And I was like, if I ever go back to Chicago, like I'm gonna try and find that guy. And I, yeah. anytime I've been back, I haven't, A, haven't been in that area of town and B, you know, he basically told me, he's like, look, I don't have nothing. I'm crazy. I lost touch with my family. I sleep any and everywhere. Like, I'm one of the few people they let hang out and bum around in this area. You know, over the course of four days, got to know the guy a little bit. And it was like all that stuff that I had heard about Chicago, like actually made sense. Yes. Whereas like with New Orleans, it's like, because what you know is juvenile and the no limit. So like the no limit team and like pretty much anybody who's come out of there, like came from poverty, like, you know that that city's like have and have nots, but Chicago does everything in its power to like keep you away from the reality of what's happening in Chicago. Yeah. And all of these rappers like hit, like they get you to it. Um, and so I get why you're like that about late registration. I totally do. I totally. Yeah. Do. Right. Um, another thing about Lupe is he had the privilege of growing up on both sides. Uh, yep. Chicago's two different cities. It's, it's, it's South side, West side. Uh, like they'll call like if if your parents are from different sides, they call it interracial marriage type shit. My parents are from both different sides, um, but he, he grew up in on the west side with the high school in the south side, so he had the uh, the knowledge of both the entire city. So that's why he's able to paint those pictures. Cause he, and he's just a great rapper and a great introspective uh, mm-hmm. person in general. Um, uh, let's move on. What you got is five. Oh shit! Hold up, let me put my list back up. Uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Mine is watch the. Mine is watch the throne. Okay. Um, I think it's 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 good here. And and so if this if this list was my favorite, this would be a completely different. No, no, no. If this list was the best albums, it would be completely different. These are my favorite. Mm-hmm. I, I've done. Yeah. I did my favorite. So yeah, uh, five is watch the throne. We talked about it. Murder, excellence, Otis. Made in America, uh, that's my bitch. Lift off, uh, no church in a while, shit crazy. But uh, go ahead. Uh, my five is. Oh, it's about to piss me off. I can is, tell. Is my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Oh no, no, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I I did not want like this. It's hard for me to rank my beautiful dark twisted fantasy because. I don't like Runaway. I've made that clear since it came out. And that's the song that makes the album for so many people. Yeah. Like, and I'm just like, it's fine. Like, I don't, I, and it's not even like a, it's not even like it, I don't relate to it or understand it. It's just, it does, it feels really cur- like superficial. Like, it's not, it, it feels like Kanye could have went deeper on that one. And that's what's missing for me. Like I'm. <sighs> so people people call this his best body of work. No, oh, it was it was it was rated the best album of twenty uh, the twenty tens. And I don't I'm like, believe that shit. Wait, Jesus came out in twenty ten. Right, then, right, right, right. <laughs> how, how does that work when the one album came out in the same? Not whatever. But you know, it was rated album of the decade, like twenty ten to twenty twenty. It was. I've album. never understood that. I don't I don't either. I like but but see the thing is like I like it. I just don't think it's that because like all right, you start off with dark fantasy, that's great. You start Amazing. off like you go to gorgeous, gorgeous is nice, power uh, is incredible. Gorgeous is my favorite song on the on the on the album, but go ahead. Really? Yeah. Huh. I've never I've literally never heard anybody say that. That's interesting. Power is fire. I like the remix. I wish that would have made it uh, made it on some album. Power's uh, crazy. Uh, I don't like all of, I hate all of the lights. I think it's just because it got played out too much, man. No, 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 no. I hated it the first time I because it's really that shit crazy. I hate it. I hate it. Uh Monsters Fire. Like crazy. The Soul Soul Appalled is crazy. Crazy. New dress is crazy. It's crazy. (laughs) Actually, that might be my favorite song on the album. It's between those two, though. Devil in a New Dress was like that was that came out like around when Rick Ross was going through the. He's a CEO. Why do people like him so much? And I'm like, Mm -hmm. because he because he could do this. Yeah, (laughs) rap. 
fuck? Like, cause I, I was also like on that same train. I'm like, but he really, really raps. Like, that wow, Bink, really Bink did this. Did you know that? What's that? Bink, he did this. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. So it's it's funny because like I, I again kid reading liner notes like one nine hundred hustler is one of my favorite like beats ever and that's a big track too like they're so like he's one of those people who like is i i wonder if you were to tell a story about hip-hop and then tell a story about people who did more than they got credit for like i wonder how high he would be on that he, he gotta be <laughs> top five because he's he's there's stuff he gets credit for that's like insane and it's like there's no way that's how he's he's old there's no way the only thing he's living off of is tracks like that there's no way because he would still need to be doing more. Uh, I like Blame Game. I like Lost in the World, Who We're Surviving America. Like, it's it's great. Yeah. It's great. I just... It's the like, back half that kind of brings it down to me, but... I don't... I mm, I think well, the other part of it, and, you know, to psychoanalyze, it's also very narcissistic. Yeah, which I love, cool. though, personally, but... I, I like it to a point... <laughs> But I think it lacks it lacks self awareness. Yeah, like, where some of the other albums are better, where like Jesus is better because I haven't named that yet. Like Jesus is better in that like he's telling you like it's not just like why are you coming after me or I'm running away because of this. It's also like I'm taking culpability for being a piece of shit. You know. Yeah. That's 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 part of the reason why I like some of the other albums better than than my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. But it's it's a nice five. Yeah. Um, so Runaway is not in your top five. It's not in mine either, as far as tracks on this album. No, 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 no. I would go, I, I got Power, even though that got played out. I've got Monster. I've got Soul Appalled. Um, I've got, that's, those, those are the top three. And then fourth was... Cause I, I I actually wrote this down and then that, that was why it took so long to get on today. Cause it was like the document that I had all this stuff in crashed and now I don't have it anymore, which is not pleasant. Uh, fourth was Devil in a New Dress and then fifth was Dark Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I love that beat. Like that Rizzo beat is just like- Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, Wu-Tang. You know uh, these first two tracks. <laughs> you know they, their their imprint is really on it. That's why I really like them. Uh, so I've been meaning to do a go back and like just listen to the whole Wu Tang catalog, but it's mm -hmm. so hard because the stuff like the stuff in like the the late '90s and early 2000s is just like super underrated, and then the stuff in the '90s is just so hard to listen to because of like just the change in sound. Yeah, but I'm gonna do that one day. Yeah. Me too. I actually tried to do it um, a couple years ago, but yeah, like you said, it's tough to listen to. Um, and it, even even I listen to. We talk about Griselda. I got a Griselda shirt on right now. Mm -hmm. I listen to Griselda eighty percent of the time right now, and it's eighty percent what I listen to. And to go even to go back and listen to Yay, it's like this is very like kind of happy music. And I'm listening to like really, really dark, yeah, uh, Griselda sound, which I love it though. So, well, but 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 it's so it's it's dark, but it's also like coke rap, which is like the best. Like, like the wrestlers who always will be able, or the the rappers who will, will always will be able to engage me are the ones who talk about selling drugs, being tough, and wrestling. Like, if you can do those three things. Like, I'm all there. I'm there. Nope. And the way they incorporate wrestling skits is just it's perfect it's perfect uh they're just man they're the best Let, let's get i'm gonna stop because people are listening to this and they're gonna be like this motherfucker's always talking about Griselda. always i gotta stop no i gotta say one more <laughs> thing about that go ahead the the, the uh and i and i, I texted you this or, or dm'd you on this about this like the discovery that west side gun is and looks like who he is is the greatest thing in, of all time yeah it's like that, that it, it's sort of like with like stack bundles or or ghostface or some of those like rappers who like have a like a, a slightly different persona than the way that they rap mm -hmm. like it, it's all like that dissonance is great so it's like he's like i know where your mama stay and then he looks like 
I he, know where that he, bitch stay. <laughs> and then he looks like he shoots you. And it's like that act that I love that. I love it. I love it. Like West uh-huh. like I've been listening to the West Side Gun like on repeat. Like and and it's weird because like Spotify, like that's where I just listen to stuff because it's it's easy and accessible. Like they changed the playlist. So I'm like, how come cruiserweight cocaine on the essential the essential oh. uh uh West Side Gun thing? It's like, well now I gotta go listen to something else. And then I start playing his radio and it's just like I'm 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 just here. I'm just here and I'm not leaving. Uh one of the best curators of, of sound that we've seen in hip hop in a long time. He's amazing. Uh, shout out to Wes, Wes I Gun. Uh, um, yes, so this was number five, four, yeah, five? Yeah, five for you. Okay, five for, five for you as well. And I have Twisted Fantasy of four, so that's easy enough. What do you got for four? My four is college. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm bracing for the shit that you say. Because I know it's just like ah, but okay, yeah. Cause I knew you were gonna have it like around here uh, when we first start start talking. So I couldn't go higher. I wanted to, but I couldn't go higher only because like it's it's perfect and it's imperfection. So, but it's it's also like the least of Kanye. Like so, as good as it is, what you mean? Like it's the least of who he actually is. It, See, I don't believe that. I think it, that's he. This is who he was. No, no, no. I know that. I know that. And like, I think at least of who he is right now. Is what you're saying? I think he was. I think he was always trying to, always trying to get out from under all of the shadows he was under as an artist, as a music, mm-hmm. as a son, as a you know, all of those things as a producer. And like, this was. He's like, this is what I have to do to get out there Mm -hmm. and it's good it's great it's it's great but it doesn't really scratch the surface in terms of like it's 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 basically like his resume so if i were to analogize this is like give me a job it's his resume and then he gets the job and then he's like all right now that i got the job here's who i really am Mm -hmm. and it's and it's still good it's still it's great like I was listening to Family Business the other day, and I'm just like, this is a song that I forget about all the time, and it's 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 great, you know. And like, I'll play uh, workout plan every now and then, just to, so good, just to hear that, just to hear that com- the the composition because it's great. Uh, and like, it's 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 so good, it's so good, but it it lacks it lacks that real window. It's very it's it's very polished. It's very it's it's like I said, it's perfectly imperfect. It's like mm-hmm. if you're trying to, it's if you're trying to put forth something to get a good grade, that's what this album is, as opposed to like putting forth something that is representative of who you are. Like truly representative. So yeah. Um I got it a little bit higher. Not by much, but a little bit higher. Um this co- this this album just means so much to me. Um for what it was and where I was uh, in 2004, you know, a freshman in high school. Ah, I'm so old. You're not though. I was uh, a sophomore in college. Yeah, so this this dropped my the spring semester of my sophomore year, um, and we had we Yay was starting to become who he was with freshman adjustment. We we all got that mixtape. Mm-hmm. Um and crazy, crazy. Um, so that was our first introduction to Yay. And I remember me when the first time I learned or listened to Through the Wire, I listened to it maybe 10 times in a row. I'm like, I, I was like, what the fuck is right. this? Right. And just the sample, uh, what he was talking about, even the video, incredible. So it just means this this CD means a lot to me. It means a lot to the people of Chicago, people I grew up with. Um, because it was basically we we knew we had like a superstar, and we never had had a real superstar in the rap game. And this felt like our first guy. Um, Twister and Common, they're good and they're great MCs, don't get me wrong, but this guy was different, and we you could tell that from 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 jump. 
it's 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 sort of like Michael Jordan. Like mm -hmm. when 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 you heard like the way like watching the last dance, watching people see him and it's like that's that's the next like he he's better than anybody I've ever heard. Like that's the sort of thing that I feel I can I can totally resonate with, like not being from Chicago, but just like seeing that like he's here and he's here to stay. Like I've never one of the things that I one of the things that bothers me about hip hop is like when the game is so fickle and like people like rise to the top and then fall back. And it's like, you know, a lot of times, like I'm very rarely wrong. I think Frank Ocean is, and that's not hip hop, but that's just like the urban music game. Like Frank Ocean was the only person where I was like, I don't think he's really going to be around in a long time, but I also don't, I don't connect to his lyrics the same way that, you know, I, other people do. But like, for the most part, I'm like, when somebody, if somebody's a, a nice flash in the pan or like is gonna have a nice career or whatever, like I can kind of tell. But Kanye was like, yeah, let's buy early on this guy. Cause like his positioning and like the people he's with and his own individual talent, like that's gonna keep him around in some form or fashion. I didn't know it would turn out to this, but it's like, he's gonna be around for a long time. To your point that he was, that, he is now this is less of who he who he was i can you can hear that in last call because he's angry telling that story mm -hmm. because he felt like i am th this that nigga what is taking y'all so long to realize that shit and it comes out a little bit more in his later albums that yo i'm angry i wasn't here 15 20 years ago um, and so I agree with in that instance that, uh, this is a different Kanye because you're right. This is his resume. Like that, that shit actually makes a lot of fucking sense. It, it's, it's, it's like the, like, I, I say this is somebody like who has always like presented well, like it, I, and that, that's, that's one of the things that like, as I've gotten older, like I've, I've come to more understand Kanye, like you present well, but like there's some there's some skeletons in the closet and there's Absolutely. some there's some unsavory things and some untoward thoughts and ideas about people and things and the way the world works. And you're just like, I deserve better than this. And not only like I deserve better than this, but I'm more than like you can accept the fact that like, you know, I really like women. You can accept the fact that like you know, I'm not conventional or I don't want to do what I was told to do or was somebody put me in place to do. So like this album is like, hey, I can do what you want me to do. And then it, and then after it's done is that and after he got that credit, after he got that job, he's like, all right, here, here, here I come. And then yeah. you know, it's a little more every single time, which is why I do like and that, that's where I struggle with where to put this in late registration. Because like late registration to me is like, it's like the first time, I, the analogy I would write is like the first time I wrote a paper in English in, in, a, in an upper level English class, in a 300 plus level English class. And I got a B and I worked through it with my professor to get that B, but like, had I known what I know now or had I been more confident in my own thoughts and assertions, I could have got an A and got there sooner. And that's where, like, that's where the, the, like, the, the more that Kanye reveals, the more I feel like, yeah, man, I get this guy. I, I really get it. I get it. And it's also why I'm also like, I don't, it's also why I have a hard time with him now, too, is because it's like, as much as I get it, it's like, I don't think I'd ever go off on that deep end. But again, some of that is discovering different things at different times. Oh, yeah. Um, when you get to a point of, of wealth, you start to see some shit you never thought you'd see. Yep. Yep. You see that you see that you see the invisible hand and the threads and, and, and how everything is connected. And like, it's got to it's got to mess with your mind. So yeah, I get yeah. it. Yes, it's, it's interesting to see how his music changed as Kim came into his life. You know, um, I think the first album where she was, his wife was Yeezus, if I'm not mistaken. And 
is is it sound took a it, it it went different. It went different. Maybe it's Watch the Throne. No, it might have been Jesus. I think it was Jesus that she, he she was actually his wife. Um, and so yeah, his sound has changed. What's your favorite uh track on on uh, College of Rome? Uh, I'm gonna be corny, but I th- I think it's Jesus Walks. It, it's either it, it, it either Jesus. Really? Yeah, it's either Jesus Walks or Two Words. Um, have you heard the version of Two Words like just the like with no with no actual drums? Like it's just the, the I have, yes. It, yeah. I love that, and that's yeah, why good. that's why I can't I can't decide. Jesus, like, so in the same way that you felt about, um, um, uh, through the wire, like, and hearing that the first time, like, I had that feel. I had that feeling with that, but with Jesus walks, it was like, as you know, that that album came out. I was nineteen, like, still quasi at home. But, but in Lexington, living on my own, like making my own life decisions. And then the song like Jesus Walks comes out and I'm like, this is blasphemous as hell, but it's also not. Yeah. And like it, it, it's taken a song that I've heard and sang all my life and also turning it into like a hip hop song. And it's like it was just it was just mind blowing. Crazy. So that's, one of, that, that, that's one of those like. That's one of those I remember where I was when I first heard that sort of tracks. I see why you got that uh, high. For me, it's got to be uh, <laughs> it's it's between "Never Let Me Down" and uh, and "We Don't Care." We don't care. I've got so many memories to that song and uh, drug dealing just to get by, stack your money yeah. till it gets sky it's just so good. Oh my goodness. Just so good. Uh, Never let me down. Precursor to, to what Hove and Jay or Hove and uh Ye were gonna do with this fucking game. Uh just man, just an amazing body of work. Last call I can listen to a billion times in a row. Um man, just really, really good. So that was your four. Yeah, I would uh, and- help. Oh, I would say uh, Breathe In, Breathe Out is also like a sleeper track on that album. Oh, see, it, I skip that every single time. Oh, no. Like, it's funny because, like, I have my, my cousin, my little one, my little cousin, he's, uh, and when I say little, I mean, what is he, 30? He's 30 now. Yeah. He's a big, uh, he's a big, he was a big Ludacris fan growing up. And I'm like, I like him, but, like, he's not as dope as you think he is. But then it's also like when you go back and listen to Ludacris, it's like he actually is a lot doper than we give him credit for. It's just oh he, yeah, he just never he didn't have anything to make albums about. Mm-hmm. So when uh, he chicken albums, and beer, like, <laughs> yeah. he made albums, they were good, but it wasn't like it word of mouth. Right. <laughs> you weren't you weren't getting anything for real out of it because he has no like the only song Southern I Hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> What's he wasn't talking about shit, man. Not Go ahead. Thing. Although he has the one song with um um not four eyes, um the other guy in the group, not I twenty. Uh, oh uh oh not I twenty. Yeah, those were the days. Um um when oh. we were uh that's is a CeeLo not- on that? No, 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 no. Uh hold on. I gotta look this up because it's gonna bother me if I don't. Maybe it was four eyes. When we were kids is the name of the track, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of who that was. Uh, Fate, Fate Wilson. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. yeah. Sure. Like that's the only that's the only song of his that like is not of the ludicrous. Uh, the typical ludicrous song like because it like it really does relate to everybody like who grew up around like the 80s or 90s where it's like you know the things that you did the things you had connection to and it actually you know gives you a nice little window into his soul but not much because it's ludicrous and he just kind of just has good bars yeah he was probably uh one of those guys that as a kid he was a, a great rapper to us but he just wasn't he was just rapping about shit we didn't know anything about so it seemed Amazing. Um, yeah, so my three is college dropout. So okay. um, what you got for your three? My three is graduation. And oh, I, wow. Like, 
Yeah, the gradu- graduation turned me on Kanye. Like, mm-hmm. I had gone from, like, loving Kanye to, like, why does everybody like Kanye now to, and then graduation came out, and I was like, I actually, I'm matter of fact, I remember, this is another one of those, I remember when I, when I first heard the album, mm-hmm. I was hanging out with Elise Marshall, and she was like, this album came out. I haven't got it yet. You want to roll with me to Target and get it and listen to it? And I was like, yeah, cool. Hell, man. Like, We're old as fuck. <laughs> right. Right. And, and and also, that was another one of those where you know, at least we're the same. We're like, we're the same class. So she shouldn't have been around UK either. Like, uh, uh, she didn't. She hung around because she was excelling and getting good degrees and doing all kinds of stuff and making right. it. I was just, <laughs> I was just chill it. Going. <laughs> but like nothing wrong with chilling dog well no there, there is in my case because it's like i could have taken over the world by now but I yeah was, <laughs> but no it was it was that one was like um that one like is really really like profound to me because it's like um i wonder like to that's that oh. song is the song that makes the album for me not that so it's good. that good but like no it's good no, but not, not it's not it, it's good. in terms of in terms of Kanye, it's not that good. Yeah, but I know what you mean. But it's like it was just so different at that time, and it's like it, it actually made me think of um, like it took me like I I always end up posting a lot of stuff on Instagram about Sesame Street, and like Sesame Street is like that was my shit when I was little, and mm. like it made me think like back to those days because it's like one of those super simple songs about you know, life that is made, made to make you think deeper, but go, but think on your own, be your own critical thinker, be your own introspective person. So it like made me feel like I was like six again, five or six again, but then also it's like, it's Kanye like projecting himself on that too and adding to the beat and make like, so that one was like, I, it, it I don't know, like it's really hard to explain, but like, I just was like, like I just, I just love, I just love that album. Mm-hmm. Like, I just love it. Yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, good morning, champion. Uh, what's the third track? Stronger. Uh, I'm, I wonder. Man, it, it hasn't missed yet. Good life. Can't tell me nothing. That is a strong six. Yeah, and I'm, and face. Barry, Barry, but like. I love baseball, so Barry Bonds, like that one, that one just hits me. Like he's like, I got you, and Drunk and Hot Girls. That song is so it's so it it doesn't fit. And that's she said why. she want a brewski. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit the rest of the album, and that's why it's so perfect. Because it's just like it's like it's like Kanye said, like you know, I'm missing something here, and he's like, you ain't talking about bitches no more. Let's get this back in. And then he's like, all right, well, what do I like this time? And then it just, it just, it turns out perfect. Yeah. I love it. He was, it. Oh, go ahead. Well, this is probably where he was. Uh, this is, this is his third album. He solidified himself as one of the best hip hop acts. He probably had a lot of drunken hot girls around okay. at that time. Which, which led to the breakups. Mm-hmm. He probably had, if we could get Kanye's list of, you know, as a stick man, he probably up there, man, as far as. There was, so I saw something on Instagram the other day and it was Wilt Chamberlain and Wilt Chamberlain was standing surrounded by like five white women. And it's like Wilt and some of his adoring fans. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn. Like, it really must be like that. And it's like, yeah, Kanye had that and then some. Because, you know, all of his forays into trying to get into, into fashion and then still just oh. have, like, Chicago. Like, listen, anytime I go to Chicago, I'm just like, I need to move here because people, just look, people just look better. Like, as a whole. <laughs> but then it's like, like, I go, I might go six months without seeing somebody above an eight and a half in Harrisburg. Mm-hmm. You don't go six minutes without oh, yeah, seeing no. somebody above an eight and a half in, in, in Chicago. Especially downtown. Oh, my goodness. Man, yeah. the clubs. And, and, and it's everybody, too. Because, like, I'm talking, like, if I, see, if I see somebody who's eight and a half or above in Harrisburg, it's probably a white woman. I have no problem <laughs> with white women. I don't have a problem with it. But, like, you know, I, 
I like variety, mm-hmm. I guess. Absolutely. Who That's doesn't? Like, so it's like, you know, spice of the life. <laughs> you see like per, like like the Persian women, like the like African women, you're just like, how how are all of you here? And I have no access to any of you. This is terrible. Yeah. Big cities do that to you, man. It's yeah, they uh do. Yeah, they do. Ooh. It's crazy. Um, uh, yes. Shout out to Chicago. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Chicago. Yeah. That's probably the first place I will go after I get vaccinated. So we might do a live podcast at that point. Absolutely. Let's do it. Um, let's do it. Uh, so yeah, graduation for year three, college dropout for me. Uh, two is uh, the life of Pablo for me. Um, I get it. It's just so good. It, and for me, a lot of the times what make albums and a lot of artists understand this is that you have to make a first impression mm-hmm. uh, with the intro. And I think is Ultralight his best intro? It I, is. I, it is. It's not. That's not a question. It is. It is. Like as much as amazing. I like, on, number two to me is on site. Um, yes, Good Morning is up there too. But um, but in terms of in terms of directing where the rest of the album is going, yes, it's the best, and it's not even close. And the and and I like I said, I had that at what eight. So like I'm not mm-hmm. saying or nine. I had that at nine. So I'm not saying this like you know I hate the album. Like I know what he was trying to do. I think where it got a it it's so strong. Did you think it overshadowed the rest of the album? No, I think it's so. I I think it's so strong that like you forget what like it's like a great thesis statement, but it's also like a reminder that. <laughs> of who Kanye was and where he's trying to be. Mm -hmm. And then like, you've got that duality, the rest of the album. And as much as like, I, I went back and I think I listened to that about three and a half, four weeks ago. I listened, I listened to it again when we were going to originally do this. That's when Mm -hmm. that was the last time I listened. So that was about five weeks ago. And I liked it better but I still don't love it. Like, to I still it's just it still doesn't connect. But some of it is just like it's a it's a different it's the most different of his sounds to me of all of his albums. Yeah. Like, I, well, I, I think I, I think when he he made this, he realized how talking about God and tracks and bringing like a mix of like gospel rap really is something that he could really excel at. So he just went all the way to the, you know, like not only did he want to do that with his lifestyle, but he just did it with his music as well. But man, I, it, this is a, a heavy, heavy hitters in this in this song. So, so you got The Dream, Kelly Price, Kirk mm-hmm. Franklin, and then Chance's debut. Um, it was, really. It was, it was, well, so, was that what? So I'm. It's not his debut, but it's, it's sort of his mainstream debut. I, I say that he took off after that. No, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, like the first time, the first time I heard Chance was um, at, was so Jesus Jesus came out in 2013. Mm-hmm. Maybe within two weeks of that, I was back at Tarix and um, one of his one of his guys who's I'm cool with, but I haven't seen in a long time. Last time, actually, matter of fact, last time I saw him. Mm-hmm. last time I was in Kentucky and he works for Adidas now and I was like I need to hook up on Yeezys not because I want them but just because I want to have some right. but uh he uh he had play, like they they were playing uh him and Jalen Rose were playing um or James Lindsay now he doesn't go by Jalen Rose anymore they were playing um was it Asher rap? yes and listen I I like I was listening and it was fine like I was cool and then Cocoa Butter Kisses came on and I was like yeah I was like, whoa, 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 this is this guy. This guy is making it, like, because yeah. that's the sort of like the beat, the 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 concept of the song, like the the sound is perfect. Yeah. And then so like when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's Chance the Rapper again. And I hadn't really heard anything of him in those in- interim three years because I 
stopped really like I wasn't hanging around people as much and listening to music. Mm -hmm. So like when I heard that and then he's like my ex looking back like a pillar of salt. Like I was just like, oh, man, that's that's it. That's this it. Is, he, and that is that is a really good bar. <laughs> and, 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 and and, you know, to speak to like what you were talking about with the gospel and the difference between Jesus is uh, Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King, like the 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 actual singing like when it where it where it ends and then like it stops being like a hip hop song and then you know you hear the gospel drums drop and then like the like all of the 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 interludinal music that goes along with it. it's like it was it was oh, that I listened to that song nonstop for like three weeks. It's really good. It's it's good. It's really good. And to me, those first three tracks seem like a, just like a long ass intro, and that's that might be why I like this album so much. Um, it 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 feels like just uh, the best intro of an album ever. That's what it just feels like. It just well, feels like it, it continues to me. To add to that, so in the same way that you felt something different, like I'm, like you were born in ninety eighty nine. 89. Okay. So yeah, you would have missed this. You might, yeah, you probably wouldn't have the same connection. Like me and all of my friends of my age, like we're all of like the Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat era. Oh yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I, I get mean, down. I get down. No, no, no. Oh no, I know. But like the street, <laughs> like Street Fighter 2 was like, was the fighting game tran like it's transcended to the point that like I was I went to DC and was hanging out with uh with a friend of mine. And we went to this game bar and like we were playing Street Fighter 2 and he was kicking my ass because he cheats. And then the, the <laughs> bartender got on and was like, all right, let me show you how this is done. And he's like, you go over there and play on the on the um, I was playing uh, the the switch, the Zelda game on the switch. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're not good enough. Get out of here. And I was like, <laughs> and I would go back and watch them play. And they were like, they like that that guy was actually really good. Like he killed my friend. He like beat him up like really bad for uh, for most of the time. But it was like for people like 30, 33 or four to like 42, like Street Fighter is it. Is so it? when I so when I heard that 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 Street Fighter sample, mm -hmm. I lost it. Mm -hmm. I lost it. Mm -hmm. I was like, because that's that's such a good use of that's such a good use of, of just like a random innocuous drop, but then also with Kanye in in mind, like it's per it, it's perfect. it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> I was listening to because uh, like you know MF Doom recently passed. I was re recently or died. I was recently listening to him, and like he has uh, like he's always into like the comics and stuff. And like one of the things like it's the same with like the Wu Tang like. There's like and and I guess I would add wrestling to sports or not I would add comics to wrestling and uh, and sports like people rapping about it where it's like um, Doom has like a whole mixtape that's like basically the transitions and all the narrative is spun on forward by like clips from seventies comics and it's oh, like wow. the seventies cartoons like the, based on comics mm -hmm. and it's like Kanye. That's that's where I felt a little lost in this album is like Kanye f did stuff to make me remember like we're of the same age and era. But then he had so many new dudes on it and did so much new stuff like it just didn't quite connect all the way. But I, I still liked it. Yeah, but that's necessary, I think, uh, especially when you're not a rapper anymore. You yeah. gotta have you gotta have niggas that's rapping how niggas is rapping now. That's true. To to write your to write your rhymes. So um, you know, I, I wonder how much chance is written for him. Um I know I know Push writes for him a lot. I know uh uh Travis writes a lot for him, uh Party. I mean all these guys, even he called Griselda in the right for him, uh, but they think we we'll never hear the tracks that they that they did with them. Uh but yeah, you gotta have those guys. I I, I get what you're saying though. Uh, but it's let's it's go like, it's like an it, it was it, and it's not a bad thing it was just like a it was a disconnect not even mm -hmm. a letdown it was just a disconnect because i because like you said that intro was so great and it was like he gets it and then it's like well no he doesn't get it but then he does get it yeah. and, it and it's like an evolution mm -hmm. man um uh, so that to me, that's a long intro. Intro once one of the ultra light beams follow stretch my hand one and two. That just seems like a long intro to me. Then he goes with Rihanna at, at number four. It's the same thing he did with 
uh, Twisted Fantasy had her, you know, belting out, doing what she does on that track. And it's, it's still still great. I love feedback. I love the, the concept of it. I love low lights. Yeah, that that just that black woman talking about her struggle. I love that shit. It's a highlights. Uh, freestyle four. It's you know you know what this album is. It's like a combination of every piece of Kanye into one album. That's why I love it. Like it feels like Larry Church. It feels like Kanye. Right? It feels like Yeezus. Uh, all into one album, and I fucking love it. I love it. It's scary. It's uh, narcissistic. It's um, it's it's got gospel elements. It's just amazing, man. It's it's crazy. I love this fucking album. Love it. I almost put it at one. I, I wanted to put it at one. It's my it's damn near my favorite, but I didn't. I put it at two. So yeah. I feel Even you. No More Parties in LA, which I'm sure Kendrick wrote the entire thing, is amazing as well. Uh and Fade is probably one of my favorites, favorite uh yay songs of the past five years, five, five and ten years. It's amazing. Interesting. That's really interesting. It's it's the house music thing. Uh, it's either you either love or hate it, and it just it just it's just great to me that that house music sound. I wish I was of that era, of the house music era. Uh, that that is a crazy fucking sound, uh, which I hope comes back in some form. That would be that would be great. Well, it, I was actually thinking about that very thing yesterday because there was an episode of Up for, or not Up First. Consider this on NPR where they were talking about like the like venues, like venues and um, like um, and live music and and plays and like the playhouses and like the the fate of the those things after COVID nineteen because like a we might not even get back to those things in the summertime and then b do people really want to go back to them? And I'm like I think we're gonna see like a a re like we're gonna see a renaissance of like a lot of shit and i, I hope, hope so that, like i hope that like house music and like my old ass will be out in the club again like there's just gonna be some different stuff going on <laughs> like, it's about I'm, to be crazy when the shit yeah. opens back up nuts yeah 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 and i'm here for it uh, well i'm just hoping that i don't that i don't do anything that causes long-term damage but i cannot make any promises yeah uh, I mean random sex with women <laughs> Wes is, could I mean, possibly do that yeah 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 so yeah but that's and, the least of your work you know what I'm saying that's that's the least of it that's what that's, that's, that's number one that's good you know what I mean so yeah it could yeah, get worse, way worse after that so yeah yeah and I'm probably like mm, it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough Man, they're going to be giving it up. And I'm here for it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Because, like, well, the funny thing about it is, like, I've, I, like, being old isn't that bad in this way. Like, I've, cons- I've sufficiently found myself in salt and pepper land. And, like, see, women love that shit. You no, know, they do. They love that shit. They do. They do. And they, and, and, and also, if you're single at this age in your life, like in your 30s, they're like 35, 36. They're like, you're probably trouble too. So like, let's just do this and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, I, I don't have the problem with that. <laughs> and spoiler, they're all trouble. <laughs> For the guys, they're, they're all trouble, guys. <laughs> Run. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I go to I go to I work at the at Foot Action at the mall at our local mall and like every time like we get started talking about people and things and like long term relationships people are like if you ever decide you want to be with somebody you'll be happy but like as it is now like I wouldn't like I understand why nobody wants you because you're a jackass (laughs) (laughs) oh man jackass like you're not like you got to be either more kind compassionate like understanding whatever and I'm just like. Yeah, you know, I want what I want. If I don't get it, I don't. I don't want it. Yeah. So what yeah. was your two? Uh, my two is Jesus. Wow. And so, I, I, I had a hard time. I had a hard time was. not putting it at one. Only, and the reason why I didn't put it at number one because I've had eight oh eights longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I. I just I find it like perfect top to bottom. Like 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 on on site is the 
it's the perfect way to intro an album the way that he did this whole album. Cause there's there's not like there's not a whole lot of cohesiveness or cohesion. That's the that's the word. There's not a lot of cohesion to the album. Like it's not like there's a, a theme weaved in through all yeah, of it. Not. It's, it's yeah. a lot of good tracks put together as a whole. And and uh, you know, there's I think he said if he wanted to if he wanted to um make you know, the album better, he'd put blood at the lead, blood on the leaf. Yeah. 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 And it's like I get it, but I love that he didn't because exactly. It's just like you're listening to it. And it's just like, oh my god, this is this is so. It's it's to me, this is the first time like he released a transcendent album. Mm-hmm. To me, well, well, 808s is transcendent. It's transcendent, but it's it's but it's transcendent. It's transcendent, like as a pop album. Like it's not as much like. Jesus is still a hip hop album, even if he's not rapping on it all the way, and even if it's mm-hmm. not like a, like a, like the the derivations from the hip hop formula are still rooted in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like, I see what you're saying. It's still heavily sampled. It's still like it, it's it's still got like like bars. It's still got like the structure and composition of a hip hop album, even though it's not like total hip hop. Like it's still in like pop land, but it's not. It's it's not like Drake in Popland. Um, it's a, to simplify like and, and stop talking about it. Like I I love it. Like Hold My Liquor is like the my, like I said my least favorite song on an album, and a lot of people say that's their favorite. Like it's and I don't I don't hate it. I just don't I just don't like it. But it makes sense. Like this is to me this this was the first time this this was this was the second time Kanye made sense, but it was the first time that he made sense as a whole person as a broader as a broader entity um you know it it 808s is just relatable like i think we've all had loss we've all had pain we've all suffered it's you know you've you've been at the end at your wit's end but like this is like this is frustration though i think i think it's just uh i think you get like some uh pare down all of yay's albums into like a single feeling yeah, uh, uh, and I just thought about that. I think that's that's something you, you really really could do because this is frustration. You could hear it uh, the entire time. But it's but it's 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 righteous frustration. Oh and yeah, absolutely. It, it's like it's like and and to go back to black skinhead, like people are always saying I'm angry, and I'm like I'm a black man in America. Why the fuck wouldn't I be angry? Exactly. Like there's so much stuff that happens around me that like I have no control of and people do like say and do like either really racist or like subtly racist stuff all the time. And I'm like, yeah. you don't even understand that, like this is a problem. Mm-hmm. And like, if I respond the way that I want to respond, that's going to exacerbate the problem rather than leading to things getting better. So it's like, you listen to it and it's just like, this album expresses a lot of that with like, Blood on Leaves and Black Skin Head, but then also Bound. Bound isn't Bound isn't my top five Kanye songs ever. And it's like, have you ever asked your bitch for other bitches? I have not done that. Me neither. Because either. I don't want to. I wanted to though. I don't want to. Di- well, I had one actually ask me if we could do it, and I was like, no, because I don't want to reciprocate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the reason you said no. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because it, it was also one of those. Like I was younger. And it was one of those situations where it's like, you know how when you were younger and like you approached women, you approached women differently, like Mm -hmm. you didn't let them be their whole selves. Yeah. It was like, I fully believe now that she was just really like wanted to meet her and her friend. And like, that would have been it. That would have been it. Probably. That would have been it. I, then I was like, well, what if I marry her? And then, and it's like all of this simp shit. Mm -hmm. And then also like, what if she says, I want to do another dude? And I was like, because I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. But it is. But, what, but she brought the idea of her, you, her, and a friend. Oh, it wasn't just, oh, it was, it, she did it a lot. And I, I, I am very. Word. We were, we were at. Do we I know this at, woman? No, no. I feel like don't. I do. Oh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. That one. <laughs> I, I actually, actually, I take that back. The one that we both know. Biblically, uh, oh I my god, dog, you can't say that. Shit. 
I think. Come on, man. Remember, remember, she, you know her, that Brazilian friend? Yes. That was, that was, she was like, no. And then she was like, but like, if we did, and I was like, we, we should, we should. But we didn't. I actually, wait, 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 wait. I, I think we. That. I forgot. What? I forgot that I actually did do that. I, I, I think we might be talking about two different women. Uh uh-uh. uh Were you? Were you in? Were you on the? You, <laughs> no, no, don't listen. No, no, no. So, I'm, I'm gonna ask you a question, and only only the two of us will understand this. Or or yeah. and the, uh, were you on the clubhouse Zoom or the cl- uh, in the clubhouse? Oh, room? okay. I thought we were talking about two different women, but we're talking about the same one. Yes. 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 So yeah, I did. I did ask. I did ask her for other, and she said she said no. But I also didn't think she. Oh my goodness! I gotta cut this out. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> But no, no, we were, we were, um, Rams, <laughs> I was at, uh, this was another girlfriend. Like I lived out on Palomar, like out, like almost at, at Nicholasville. And we were mm-hmm. at, this was, this was one of the times that she did this. Like we were at Ramsey's and our, our server was fine. Like she was like real, real fine. And she was like, you want me to ask? And I was like, uh, damn, she was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, well, because it was one of those situations where it's like, so I stepped in a lot with her, like, because she is, she's a very pretty woman. Like, I still think she's pretty, even though, like, mm-hmm. we're not, we're not dating and we don't speak very often. But, like, it was one of those things where she was sensitive, of, like, as to who I, who and what I liked. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was going I love when women are like that. That's when they, they, they best. When they want what you want, that's like, oh, that's it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess I just wasn't comfortable with it at the time. Like every time, every time we went somewhere, we'd go like go get pizza and be standing in the line. And she, I, she'd catch me looking. She'd be like, "I'm looking too," and I'm like, "What? What is this? What is happening here?" It's like mm-hmm. ah. And, and uh. shout out to all the women. Shout out to UK women. Um, yes. <laughs> shout shout out to all. Um, University of Kentucky women in our era. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, like, so, ba- like, Bound, like, that's one of my favorite songs ever. Like, that's all, <laughs> it's it on all the time. Like, it's on it's on every playlist we've ever had at Foot Action. So, like, I can count on hearing that on every Saturday whenever I mm-hmm. go in. I'm just like, this is such an absurd song, but I'm so glad it exists. So good. And so the video. Good. It's absurd as well, yeah. <laughs> Crazy crazy uh but like yeah i i just i love it and i wish i i in a, in a world not where 808s and heartbreaks doesn't exist but where 808s and heartbreaks is not auto by as much autobiographical jesus mm-hmm. is my favorite album mm-hmm. and jesus is and to me jesus is his best album but with 808s and heartbreaks that's my number one and i just I, i'm standing by that <clears throat> well and then as you talk about him asking his bitch for other bitches the other, the flip side of that is he found really the woman that he felt like gave him the best chance at his side to be who he wanted to be. He, yep. she, she gave him a lot, what he, what he was looking for, what he was missing, what he felt like he was missing, that he made the song about her uh, professing his love for her. He had to throw his Kanye jabs in there to yep. make it, uh, make it really him, but yeah. Make it really Kanye, but he really found the woman that he, he, they got like 10 kids or some shit like that. So it, it's, it's, and why I relate to that so much is because it's like, had I been either more accepting or more mature or more in tune with like, you know, asking for what I wanted and taking it, the woman I'm referring to would probably be my wife. <laughs> Damn. It's always the ones that get away, bro. Yeah. I, I have like, mine is a UK girl. I'm not even afraid to say that. Um, that's the one that got away. We're not, but, talking, but not the one we were talking about earlier, correct? No, come okay. on, no. I, I'm gonna take no. I, I, I gotta, I gotta take that out. I gotta take this out. But no, no, no. Leave it in. Leave it in. She'll, she'll appreciate. She'll appreciate it, it though. She she's, will, she's she a good absolutely sport. Absolutely appreciate. It. Absolutely, she really would. Uh, I actually talked to her yesterday. Uh, <laughs> and, and the other part is, she'll be like, I don't remember him doing that because when she was talking, like that was the thing about the clubhouse thing. I was like, she was talking about how she was in relationship. And I was like, 
you don't remember that we dated, right? Because like none of this stuff you're saying is true to my knowledge. I was like, I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> so we're more friends than anything else. Mm-hmm. So I like, I just know too much. No, oh, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know he talks a lot. She yes. Yes, we're more friends than anything else, so I, I, I know too much. But yeah, it's not that one. Uh, it's another one. And I ain't about to say her name. or But yeah, let's just move on. Um, All right, I'll let you do, I'll let you escape. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Because there's a lot, it's a lot of girls that's probably thinking, is he talking about me? But it's, it's one girl. No, that, no, they, they, everybody knows who it is. Like I'm not, I, I don't know who it is, but I'm saying like everybody, who, everybody who's listening, who will hear this conversation, will know exactly who you're talking about because there's 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 something to be said. Like when you know, when people know someone's the one for you, like they know exactly who you're talking about to the point that like whenever I did break up with or was broken up with by that woman, like everybody in my life, like like close. And like from a distance was like, oh no, I thought you guys were going to be married. Damn. Yeah. No, people will know. People know will know who you're talking about. Yeah. I think my my closest friends to do because uh, she was at the crib a lot, uh, and and Lex at the crib a lot, um, and had some good cheek. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. All right, where we at, man? Um, you were at number two. Yeah, my two is uh, the life of Pablo. Um, oh, that's right. So you're number one then. Yeah, it's late registration. We talked about the late registration. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I talked about it a lot, but just a perfect album to me. It felt it felt like a lot like the Blueprint uh, in that sense. It's a great album, top to bottom. Uh, I think some of his best songs he's ever made are on those out on that album. Drive slow, uh, we major, uh, and even the B tracks are just amazing uh celebration late um the the song with uh with lupe the single um the singles are are amazing uh it's just a it's just a great album man um and it's and it's number one for me no i i totally get that like i i go back to i go back to like it's the t- like it sounds like an album of the time and some of the stuff that is great is is still great but it's like it's and and I say this like here's the perfect example because outcast does not still make music mm-hmm. I can still hold stankonia as my favorite outcast album mm-hmm. cuz like stankonia is like this is like Two dudes, their crew putting together the like the best thing that they can do, but also still and and like it's so good it reaches further than they intended to, but also like it's still true to their original roots. Like where at like because bombs over Baghdad, like I've heard people say that's the greatest hip hop song of all time, and I won't argue that. Like mm-hmm. I I it, I I can think of some songs that like might get in there, but like that is. That's the one that like, if you wanna if you wanna talk about like what turned MTV from like you know MTV jams to uh, it, 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 like took MTV jams to like TRL and like the mainstream like yeah that, it was like, Outkast yeah at that at that era that that song is so iconic and it, yeah. and it, and and going back to like the whole Kanye and the church thing like it does a lot of those same things in a really, really fun, like upbeat, happy way. Yeah. And like, I can listen to it, but it's not something I go back to because like the Kim and Cookie skit is amazing, but like, I don't like, that's just outside of my realm of being right now. Like, and mm-hmm. has been for a very long time. But every time I go back, I'm like, it's 19, it's, it's 1999, 2000 again, I'm 15 and like, I'm learning to do things on my own. And mm-hmm. late registration is very much like that as well, where it's like, it's like, you know, it, it it's still good. It's still great, but it's like, it's, it's so dated and not dated in a way that's bad, but it's just like, it's not dated like an eighties album. 
like where mm -hmm. you know everything was overproduced and over like it's just it's stuck in that time and it takes me back to being 19 and running around uk and lexington and richmond and back to louisville and doing all the stuff that like you do so like it it, it it's all oh, you had a you had a eku too you had a man where huh no well i did <laughs> my friends did I, 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 I subsequently tagged along. I and then whatever, 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 uh, whatever spoils were left. Were left. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. But I agree. I agree. Um, it's a little. It sounds of that time, but it's still to me. Uh, it's still relevant in this time. Uh, even hey, mom, I listened to that last night. Man, it's just so yeah. good. Like. The end of, he's just saying, well, my, 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 my. that's just so good. Like, it's just, I don't know, man. This, this, this album is perfect to me. Um, and it's, it's my number one by yeah. And, sure. and I l listen, as much as like I'm mad about it, I'm not because it's, yeah. it's, it's just the, the Kanye it, to close this out because I, I've already talked about 808s and Heartbreaks, you know, on two podcasts with you, basically, because I went into it on the last one, on the right. last one so there's nothing left for me to say. But his discography is, it's like, it's, well, no, because it's, I would say it's probably better than Michael Jackson's. Um, like, it's like Beatles level. It is. It's It's up there. Like in terms of in terms of transcendent artists, like I mean, well, Stevie Wonder is a different case because Stevie Wonder is like, like I'm trying to I'm trying to think of people that are on that level and artists or groups that are on that level and like it's it's hard to argue with any of Kanye's catalog. Yeah, it is. People will do it though. Um, it's people who really love the old Kanye and don't fuck with his new shit and but it's all amazing and I hate that they do that it's a lot of Chicago people um do that shit which I hate because this well, shit is amazing well and that's why like I always have to give like the life of Pablo is the one album that it's like I have to give a chance and I have to just listen to it not for what I want to hear but for what is actually there and if like if I were ever able to do that two or three or four times in a row, I might have a different opinion on it. But yeah. because it's so much like, it's not quite what I wanted. And, and it's funny, cause like I asked my, like when it came out, um, my sister, my, well, she my, she doesn't live in Chicago anymore. She was in Chicago up until the pandemic and then she went back to Louisville. Now she's in Portugal. Who, uh, who knows oh, how wow. that's gonna last. I don't know, I, but anyway, the, the, the um, you know, she was in Chicago and of that, like around, you know, all of the Chicago stuff. And I was just like, well, what did you think of it? And she was like, I don't like it. It's what people wanted him to do. And I was like, I, I like, we didn't have much of a conversation about it, but I was just like, but I, this is, this, how is this what people wanted from him? Like, it doesn't sound like anything I would want. And then like, I, like I said, as I'm able to kind of listen to it over and over again, I start to hear like, well, you know, it, it is, it's not what I want, but it's what makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's what drives him forward as an artist. And, you know, I don't keep up with a lot of pop culture. Like I got to watch, uh, what's that movie with Zendaya and, um, Den oh, uh, and, uh, Denzel Jr. Yeah. Uh, I got to watch trash, it. but oh, I, I, uh, I got to watch it. Cause this is like one of the few things like, it's like, I want to be a part of the zeitgeist on this. Yeah, um, I was like that with like Bird Box, uh, like there's just certain random things or or like um, what was the 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 recent one, My Rainey's Bottom. And, oh yeah, Black uh, Bottom. Yeah, yeah, My Rainey's Black Bottom. And then what was it? What was the one? The one that um, Car not Carrie Washington. Um, the the one with like the 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 Ali one, Ali Malcolm X Jim Brown. Oh, uh, one night in Miami. Yeah, like that. Like I was in on that. Like I like I tried. I'm trying to get back into being in on the things that I think I actually need to know and matter. Yeah, as just ignoring it all. So like that's that that was why like the life of Pablo. Like I had to actually take it in, even though I wasn't ready for it and didn't want it. Because it's just yeah. like I gotta 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 keep up with something. 
Yeah. And the more I learn about Kanye, the more like he talks about stuff, like, information leaked about him or whatever. It's just like he's just a really troubled guy who's not troubled because like in the in the sense of like he's going to harm anybody. But like in terms of like his internal conflict is something that like a lot of people struggle with. And as a as a black man who just likes what he likes and enjoys the things that he loves, like it's got to be tough no, I know, like, I know that to some extent myself, it's got to be tough to try to fit into what people want you to be, but then also do what you want to do and be respectful of others. Yeah, he's he's had that internal struggle for, you know, since he's been a public figure. I'm sure he's had it all his life, but uh, specifically since he's belonged to us. Um, so that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, Wes, man, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, we got another one down. I don't know where to go after Yay and and, and Hove. Uh, it's tough to go somewhere after that, but you well, think of somebody. Well, I mentioned MF Doom a couple times on this. I think that like I I I, I kind of like the or or the Wu Tang. Like I kind of like some of the more obscure stuff. Like because mm -hmm. Iron Flag is like my favorite Wu Tang album, and people are like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's fire," but it's like it's not as critically acclaimed and it's not something a lot of people listen to. And, and mm -hmm. I kind of, I, I kind of like the idea of doing something either more obscure or just genre jumping. Like, yeah, we can. Like, well, I personally want to do a, uh, not, not specifically with you, maybe with a woman to, with, uh, like a, I, I'm, I'm in the beehive. So, uh, I need to talk about Beyonce at some point. You and, well, I need a crossover episode between you and Kayla. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> on your show it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen with hers. well it's not gonna happen dog oh it needs to it it's needs not to. it needs to so bad and not not even like not we're, even we're, we're 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 not great friends anymore oh no that that's why it needs to happen well, she, I, well, she, listen, you're not getting this. <laughs> you're not understanding, no, no, bro. I, I understand. No, I, I fully understand. Uh, nah. <laughs> I, I fully understand. Shout out to Kayla, too. Uh, it's, I, to I, I've said this, I've said this literally, like, for 16 years. If, if I could get everybody I knew together to work together on one project... We could be great. Like it, it either it's like either saving Kentucky or decide like starting up a nonprofit, like, right? Like to like consulting company or like you know investing in something. Like it, oh my god, like we know so many great people and yeah. like everybody's in their own world and does their own thing and you know life happens and you fall out of touch with people or you know shit happens. Yeah. But Kayla, Kayla and me aren't on great terms right now, but. She is genius level. Uh, I really enjoy our, our conversation. She is very, very intelligent. Uh, so shout out to her. I, I'm a fan of, I'm like, as much as I try to avoid conflict, I'm a fan of like that tension in that happens in, in conversation. Uh, not going to happen. I'm trying to tell you. It's <laughs> not happening. I know. Go. <laughs> I know. I'm just stirring uh, the pot. I can't help it. And I got to stop stirring the pot. Yeah, please stop. Please stop. We'll figure <laughs> something out uh, to talk about. Maybe I'll go back. Maybe, yeah, maybe you'll go back and uh, listen to Wu-Tang. Wu um, maybe we can rank our top albums of the 90s. That'd be hard. Yeah, if I, the 90, the 90, like, if we, if we did 10, I, so the reason why that would be hard, like, you might not get much out of 96. Like, 96 might encapsulate two thirds of the list mm, for you. No, I don't um, even think it's for no, like if you just go back, for everyone. Yeah, like if you go back and look, like what what did Jay Z drop in '96? Was that Reasonable Doubt? Yeah, like and Lauren Hill dropped. Uh, I think like Reasonable oh, Doubt was like the seventh best album that year. Right. I think Big dropped Punk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a like the 90s 
the nineties and hip hop are so, it's 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 actually you know uh, that that's probably like a real podcast somebody like a like not just a podcast like episode like a series somebody should do yeah Blake could do that and just be like look we're gonna talk about nineties hip hop and where that like because you can can like there's the all the connections to the sixties seventies and eighties. Mm-hmm. And then there's like, and what got it to that point and made it sort of a mainstream thing to the extent that it was. And then like, as a foundation for what we have now, like it's an interesting story because, you know, you listen to, you get, you see, so you see and hear so many people get mad at the new school people for doing, for biting their style. And it's like, as, as much as I don't like old people being bitter, cause I don't want to be a bitter old person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also get why they're bitter. Cause it's like, you copied my entire style. Absolutely. And maybe you didn't know you did it, but you did. Oh, they do. <laughs> I, it's there's there's a lot to be said for there's a lot to be said for modern ignorance and and what it brings. But I but in the same in that same vein, like I've heard Vince Staples talk about it a lot. And Vince Staples is like very disrespectful to old people, but it's disrespectful in a way that's like it's not it's 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 disrespectful in the sense that like you didn't pay homage but it's also like is does homage need to actually be paid like what are you actually asking me for Mm -hmm. because it's like if you're if you're asking me to like understand who you are and what you came from like got there got that got that but like if you're asking me to bow down and ask you you know to be a mentor or whatever it's like i'm not doing that like he's I don't even really like, I know some of his music and he's okay as an artist. Like, I think he's a little too out there, but like, I love listening to him talk. He's a fucking like, genius. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's, he's, he's been interesting for a long time. Yes. Uh, very, very. Uh, I love the guys that are, have the street element, but are very, very smart as well. Um, Lupe, him, uh, those type of guys who, but he's like really a crip. Like, he is like he still like is gang bang, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so we'll figure something out, and I guess we do one maybe every three months or something like that. No, let's try talk- one more. I, I'll try it. Listen, let me t- let me tell you why why I was so excited to do this and why I was excited the first time. And like, even though like I was just like I can't do it now or I wasn't ready, like I was like, damn, I should have just done it. Like it's it's good to have the conversations. It's good to connect personally, but then it's also mm-hmm. good to just like it's a, it's a fun feeling to remember that like the stuff I used to like I can still like and also make a part of like what I do and how I think and feel. Like absolutely, there's no reason for that. Like and, and you know you get like into the professional world and like everything is all buttoned up and people are all proper and prim and perfect and it's like none of that shit's true. And also like you know. I mean, maybe maybe this whole reckoning with the world will allow me to be who I truly am without having to worry about white people bucking back. So yeah, let's so, create a network, man. Let's do it. Um, because the guys that are creating networks are too rich to really care about it. They're going they they have they've made it already. It's tough to to really get into that gear when you've already made it. When you got a million dollars in the bank uh, plus. Um, but when you need the grind to get it, you can create something special. So, yeah, um, you know, we'll talk definitely. And 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 we'll have to get on. I was gonna. I meant to ask you about your Super Bowl picks. You'll have to. We'll have to get on some of the sports conversation. Oh, absolutely. You know what? Well, yeah, we should fucking bring you on uh, to talk about sports. Uh, Every now and then, uh, like, cause, cause I actually, I like your, I like the chemistry you guys have. Like, there's a, there's a certain level, like of, there's a certain level of like. You all know where you're coming from, and it make it keeps the conversation level, grounded, and respectable. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, you know, you throw a wild card in, or somebody else who doesn't know what's happening, or doesn't. It's, it kind of, it kind of, yeah, I know, it kind of throws things off. But uh, yeah, I got the Chiefs, um, and I haven't seen anything to make me go against that. They're gonna kick their ass. I, I, the the old line worries me. It's one of it those does. Mike Rembers. It's yes. it's one of those things that just like I I. I still have the Chiefs too, but like if Tampa Bay figured out a way to pull it out, it would be because they got to Mahomes or a lot, or they they I, where I was listening to Mina Kimes talk about this the other day with um 
uh, who, who was on their show? I can't remember who it was, and I'm not going to look it up because it ain't that important. But they, they were talking about, um, and then, uh, and then, uh, some it, was it Don, was it Dominique Foxworth? I was about to say this, but I thought it was probably Foxworth. They're always together. It was like, no, no, no. It, but it, it wasn't on. The, he was talking about on another show, or somebody was talking about, or maybe it was that same show where they said Steve Spurrier, offensive god, said that the the Chiefs have the best personnel group he's ever seen, like on offense. And I had this conversation before you keep going. I had this conversation with football people I trust. Uh-huh. And so I told them that this was the best offense I've ever seen. And but they were I got some pushback, but it it is. But go ahead. If if you I I would argue that 07 Patriots and uh and uh Greatest Show on Turf. And uh, yeah, Greatest Show on Turf. I always I always discount them because 2000 Vikings. If you put 2000 oh. Vikings into in now, Whew, that's fine. Problem. Because 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 the 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 play design that they had was already ahead of its time, but then they would also incorporate some of the stuff, uh, some of the and this this was the point I was trying to get to. It's like with Tyreek Hill, like his vertical speed is what they maximize, but they like the, they're anxious and eager to see what they do with his speed going across the field because mm-hmm. so much of so much of football now is like getting big play, breaking big plays over the middle. And then mm-hmm. hitting the big play over the top when you get the chance. Yeah. So like I, I think they'll have a great game plan in place to make sure that Tyreek Hill gets the ball and does what he needs to do. But you know, if they're not able to have, it, you watch the Chiefs, and it's like everybody uses a Warriors analogy, where it's like they can go for ten and two in in a minute and a half, and then the game's over. Mm-hmm. It's like if they don't. I know they can win a game by just completing drives, but then you get into who has the ball last. And if Tom Brady has the ball last with two minutes with, with, with even a minute to go and maybe one time out, like that's not a place you want to be in. It's not, but I think that this guy is not, he's 44 years old. This isn't, this isn't, even 40 year old Tom Brady. When you put him in that spot now, it's tough. If you watch him, even in that Green Bay game, he kind of trailed off toward the Oh, end. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because your body, you struggle to hold up the entire time. So I don't think people are always saying, and my friends have even said that, you know, give him the ball with a minute left, you know, he's going to do it again. But I don't know if that's true. Oh, I don't, I don't know that he'll do it again. I just, like, to me, the, f- if if it's a close game to that extent, I would be worried if I were Kansas City. Because I think I'm I, not though, but I hear you. Yeah, because you know, it, it th- there were a couple plays earlier this playoffs where it's like, you know, Tyreek Hill dropped the ball and you know, overthrow a Travis Kelsey, and then the you you got one drive and you don't convert on your drive, and then that's that. Mm-hmm. So like it, it's the the I think they still have a margin for error. But it's not as big as it has been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where that's where, yeah. Like I see people saying 38, 27, 31, 27, like basically like Chiefs are gonna like I don't I don't I haven't seen a whole lot of people picking Tampa Bay. But I'm just I'm interested to see I'm I'm I i do not care who wins. Like it's Black History Month, so I pref- I guess I'd prefer <laughs> my homes win. But like I, I'm not gonna lose any sleep if Tom Brady wins. Like I don't hate Tom Brady. Yeah. Like and I, I'm not I'm not mad at the goat conversation. Like I don't really care. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, I hope it's a fun Super Bowl. Yeah, it should be. Um, there's two points, and I'm gonna get you out. One is that um, they're at home, and that is an unheard of advantage in a Super Bowl. If you come into my house. And the biggest game of the year is happening. I'm going to cheat. I don't give a fuck. I, I'm gonna rig something to make your life trouble. Uh, I don't know. I figure some way out to have an advantage. Period. That's my that's my take um, on that. But also, man, the Chiefs when they have to get up for a game, they rarely lose. Yeah. Uh, no. I, I I'm glad I don't I don't bet on sports. I'm glad I don't because that this is the type of game where it's like I'd be a hundred percent for sure, and then like 
anything can happen. I'm very confident the Chiefs win this game, like extremely. I, I, I'm, I'm going against a man-to-man defense with that personnel, with an old-ass quarterback on the other side. They're going to kick their ass. I, listen, I, I think I was thinking like that too, but you know, a we got to give Todd Bowles some credit for what absolutely he did in the game that they in in slowing them down in the second half after after uh, Tyreek Hill had almost 250 yards receiving the first half. Um, they but, he was fucking them up. They they're gonna kick their ass. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, listen, every I I like so I have other than the Seahawks like. I, I don't intentionally watch a lot of other games. So if I catch mm-hmm. stuff, like it's either by accident or because like, I'm just, I got nothing else to do. And the, the a, the way Sean Murphy bunting is playing, but then also what he's been able to get away with this entire playoff. It's like Richard Sherman level, like handsiness and being physical and getting away with it. Yeah. That, that is going to make a difference. Yeah. I hear you. Um, it's just tough when it's like just so much speed. Yeah. Even oh. even even when it's Devontae Adams, he's not like a burner. You know what I'm saying? No. Um even the guy that really got off in that game was uh uh Valdez Scanlon. He's a little bit faster than Devontae. Uh so I don't know. I it's just very tough to check these guys. Nobody really can do it. You just gotta pray. Right. Right. Um well, and they don't have enough. Well, that's what got me because it's like uh, Scotty Scotty Miller was like, "I'll beat Tyreek Hill in the foot race," and Scotty yeah. Miller is very fast. He's I fast. Looked, I was like I looked at his forty time and I was like, "Did you were you not paying attention when when uh, Tyreek Hill ran down Hardman and Hardman runs a faster forty than Scotty Miller does?" Yes. Yes. And it's the like, only, <sighs> yeah. The only way they win is if they knock Mahomes out, which. It's possible, entirely possible for them to do that. Yeah, yeah. Like it's and, and, and the, to to the to the point of like the best offenses you've seen in speed. Like you know, it's always funny to 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 look at the way speed works because like I, every time like I'm you see me on Instagram anytime uh, anytime uh, there's a Randy Moss highlight, I'm I'm always down to reshare it because like his speed was on a totally different level. But it's it's like it's like it's one of those things where it's like five yards a stride. Like he's just a gazelle running. Whereas like right. Tyreek Hill yeah. is like that man. Literally a cheetah. Yeah. Yeah. He's like. Choo, 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 choo. Yeah. It's great. He's great. And can y'all, can you write a letter to Pete Carroll and uh, who's was the GM? Schneiderman? I think his name is. Oh yeah. John Schneider. Yeah. Hall uh, of Fame GM just on his drafts in in twenty. I was I was actually having yeah, conversation but he's gonna get Russell day. Wilson killed. It seems like this has been his mission for years. Get this man some O line protection. What are we doing here? I don't, it's not. It's I don't. It's not the protection. And this this was so this was a this was a conversation that came out. That this was a conversation that Mina did have on her podcast. Um, and and then I've heard on other shows and just read about too, is it's not it, it, the the main issue with Russell Wilson as a short quarterback is that he does not have and and well it's not just him as a short quarterback but also the type of quarterback he is he does not throw the ball short and quick. Since since Doug Baldwin's been gone, he has not had like a reliable possession receiver that like you know three step drop, plant your foot, release the ball, timing it's there, um, and you know you that's that's part of the reason why that goal line play is so infamous, and it's like because uh-huh. that's not his strength, and I'm not like I'm one of those people who's like look, it how was, much does that hurt? Uh, Super Bowl Forty hurts worse because the refs actively were against the Seahawks. The Steelers won. Yeah actively against the Seahawks it was it was not fair um that one that one bothered me but it was it wasn't even that they passed because everybody's made like there's been a lot of like writing and reporting on the fact that like the the personnel group that they had uh on the field like that was not a personnel group you run from and I very much understood that like what's his name um from UK the receiver from UK who was on the team at that oh Chris Matthews yeah 
Chris Matthews wasn't even supposed to play, and yeah. then he ended up being the leading receiver that game because everybody was hurt slash it, no one was effective and could get down the field or, or get open like more than two or three yards away. And so like I'm not mad, I'm not mad about that, but part of it is like all of Russell Wilson's line, like linemen are a lot taller than him. So he doesn't have the same sight lines and viewing windows. And unlike Drew Brees, like he's accurate, but he's not accurate. Like he's not accurate on the inside of the field. Mm -hmm. So there's only so much that you can do as he currently is. Um, There's only so much that you can do as he currently is to, um, to, ramp up that quick passing game. And because they have never had a quick passing game, then you end up with Russell Wilson getting 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 pressure like crazy and having guys come after him. And that's where I don't think I don't blame them on anybody other than the like that's not a scheme problem as much as it is it, and it's not a person it's it's not even an offensive line problem. Because like what ends up happening is you can always rely on five and seven step drops mm-hmm. with the Hawks. And you can almost always rely on them running when they're supposed to run and passing when they're supposed to pass. So the, there's no, there's no element of surprise or anything to give the linemen an advantage to make them better or to make the defensive, the defensive line hesitate or play on their heels any at all. Um, so it's like, I, I, I don't think they're, that bad and and as the seasons go along they become better they get more cohesive this mm-hmm. year was an anomaly just because i think they ended up they ended up still trying to do the same thing against two deep coverage and it took too long for them to to adjust to you know let's let's run a deep out instead of a go with dk and like let him use his physicality to to make the rest of the play or just settle for 17 yards instead of instead of that home run 50 yard pass that we were getting early on in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause everybody knew we were trying to stop the run. It was like, it was like, there was no adjustment that during that time, like I used to get really mad about the line and some of the, cause, but I stopped doing that. Cause it's like, J.R. Sweezy left. He was good. Jermaine Effetti left. He was good. Like those guys are like, guys leave and they're still decent. Pl- like they're either decent or better because they run in a more balanced offense. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know how I feel about the hire uh, for the new old coordinator. I hope something changes, but I think it's going to, it's still going to have the same problem. Like every season ends and I'm just like, yeah, they lost, but like, they're not, they didn't have to lose that game. Like, I don't, I don't like when they lost to new England, like I, and that goal line play, it's like, they were better and they should have won, but it's like, it's new England. So it doesn't hurt the same way that it would if it was like, cause they they'll lose that game to the to the Giants like they did this year. Yeah, that was an ugly ugly loss. Yeah, and it's because instead of instead of instead of imposing their own will and having their own identity, they stick to old school football, which I get. But they're like, what makes what makes Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan or Andy Reid, and I guess by extension, um, or not by extension, because I don't know um, to um, to to what extent he makes the control over everything. But Eric Bieniemy, like, what make them good at what they do offensively is it's like a staccato offense. Like mm-hmm. you, it's upbeat and up pace, but also you don't like it's second and nine, and you might get a run. And like, they're largely going to pass on first down, but they're not going to attack the same level on first down. Whereas like when you watch the Seahawks, it's like, all right, down and distance di- dictates that we do that, but we're going to trick them this time and go play action. And then it's like, well, everybody knows you're going play action. Cause that's your tendency. That's the way that you roll on these things. And I, I just wish they had a more dynamic offense. Yeah. Um, I agree. I I just looked at the hire. I didn't even know y'all had made a hire offensive coordinator. Um, anybody yeah. that stands fucking next to Sean McVay gets a damn job. That shit is crazy. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'll just I don't like guys who haven't called plays, <laughs> damn near ever. Uh, he called plays in high school, so it looks like, but that's it. 
So uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I love you, your guys' uh, personnel. DK, uh, t- uh, Tyler Lockett. Chris Carson is one of the best looking runners I've ever seen. Um, he has a lot of ability. So, yeah, I like it. I like I like uh, the personnel, but please don't get him killed. Please. They need what they need to do is like and and uh, DJ Moore does this a little bit, but it's not like they need an actual possession receiver because like in the way that they are, it's it's so it's so weird because uh, Tyler Lockett's fast as shit, but he's their possession receiver, and DK mm-hmm. Metcalf is big as hell, but he's their game breaker. Right? And it's like they need a like and and both of them can do both of those other things, but they need a they need a guy whether it's a tight end or uh, or just a big body receiver who it's like, I can get you five yards if you need five yards. Right. For and sure. I, and, and like, I can, I can have the, I have the size and, the, and the, the quickness to operate in that space. Cause it's like, you know, that the play that costs them against the Rams, it's like, we're going to get DK the ball on the screen. And it's like, all right. I mean, that's kind of a good idea, except for like, you just like everybody just saw DK calling for the ball and asking to get the ball. And you're when, whenever they, when their, their ideas of making plays always happens in crowded areas. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's like, they don't understand like where the Rams are good, where the Falcons were good a few years ago, where the 49ers are good is creating space so that Mm. someone is so open, they make a play in that space. Yeah. Kyle Shanahan does a great job with that. Right. And it's like when, when Seattle has big mistakes, it's like, Hey, let's group all these people together and like have all this chaos in one, in one spot. And it's like, that's not like, that's the exact opposite of what football, like good offensive football is. Mm. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. I'm going to get you out. Thanks for the uh, Seahawks. I didn't know we were going to get into football, but that was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like, like, like I said, there's a little bit of jealousy about the sports conversation, but I also know, like, that's, like, that's a, that's, I like it. Like, I, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a good, that's what, that's why I keep saying about, like, what you're doing is working, because it's, it's the sort of conversation I want to get in on, you know? Yeah. Like, and that's, that's a, that's a good element as you're building. Yeah, I think so too. All right, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Yeah, take care. All right. See you. Thanks for listening to the Rashawn Franklin podcast. As always, please subscribe. Uh, we're everywhere you listen to your podcast. That's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, just search us on Google, anywhere you can find us. Again, thank you and uh, peace. Check it out. Thank you.